Warning, it is the opinion of the Forestry Productions LLC and the Working Perspectives podcast that we should inform you that some of the language used in this recording could possibly be considered offensive. You have been warned, so if you decide to listen to the recording, then don't complain about the language. Hi, hello, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk to some real people about some real things, living real lives, doing real stuff. This is the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle, accompanied today by Jalen Dove, Justin Richardson, Captain Jerkbeard, Tom Lavelle, and our special guest is the one and only Joe Tamburino. You can find all our stuff and all our content on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can also on Instagram at Working Perspectives Podcast, and you can join us on the Twitter and the Tiki Talk at Working P Pod. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workperspectives at gmail.com and please like and subscribe so we can keep this party going. Jalen Dub, how you feeling, my man? Feeling good, feeling great. Looking good, looking great. Tom, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Glad to hear, thank you. And speaking of thank you, this is the Working Perspectives Podcast. Let's get this thing started, let's go. It's our objective to be effective by voice in societies working perspective exploring your day and how you get paid launching a new episode every tuesday your day can transform while we inform with new episodes available on every platform so check out our line and how we get live guys let me tell you let me tell you let me tell you a little bit about our guest today joe tamborino we have honestly this is the kind of shit i love he's uh he's just like one of us one of the regular guys you know what i mean that knew what his worth was knew he wanted better worked his ass off to get to where he is it's a hell of a story kid from south philly makes it out and now he's a one of the best plastic surgeons around he does Brazilian jiu-jitsu that's kind of how i got linked up with him he, he goes to the Hensler Gracie PA Academy, and we're batting a thousand on the killers from the Hensler Gracie PA Academy on this show. So just another legend from there. And dude, I'll tell you, when he agreed to be on here, honestly, man, it just raises the caliber of the type of guests that we're getting on the show. And I just, you know, I'm super excited to get into it. So we're going to get right after it. We got a lot to cover. So Joe, man, thank you so much for being here, bro. Can't thank you enough for coming on. Before we get started, I would just like to ask, what movie do you think is better? The Godfather Part 1 or The Godfather Part 2? You just busted me because I got to tell you, I didn't see The Godfather until Part 3. Whoa! You started <laughs> with Part 3? Wow. I started at Part 3. Oh, that's you, a bold I'm a move. Bad, I'm a bad Italian-American. I just told <laughs> you before the show that I'm eating jarred tomato sauce nowadays. Uh, and I haven't seen Godfather 1 and 2. You've man. only seen 3? Oh, I've seen 3. That's, that's the great... That's well, right. he That's... probably saw three and was like, what is that? What's the big I deal? Cannot, <laughs> I cannot tell a lie. You have to be, you have to be in the, in the 1%. There's oh, got to be man. so few people alive who've only seen three. Well, it's yeah. wild. If you were, it. if you weren't so busy, you could watch one and two, but when, sling, <laughs> when things slow down, I highly recommend watching one and two and especially and two. two. What did two, you think of three? Two is way better. God, I saw three so long. I thought it was pretty good. I'm a big Al Pacino fan, so I kind of... And he's really Al Pacino in that one. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like almost anything that Al Pacino was in. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. I love it, it. There's nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? I mean, they did have the storyline of, like, the kid that came from the, the incestual relationship between Sonny and his cousin. Yeah. Right. And he was kind of like a wackadoo, you know, yeah. but it was, dude, they, I did. Apparently there's a show on, I think it's on Peacock or Paramount plus it's called the offer. It's about yeah. the making of the Godfather. I wanted to check it out. I haven't done it yet, yeah. but yeah. Godfather. Yeah. What about Goodfellas? What do you like better? Goodfellas or casino? Oh uh, shit. That's a tough one. Yeah. That uh, is a tough one. 
Yeah, but I'm going to go Goodfellas. Yeah, that's yeah. damn right. I'm going to go Goodfellas. What about you, Justin? Good. Yeah, I'd say Goodfellas. Yeah, I would too. Casino's yeah. ending is just... <clears throat> <laughs> it's rough <laughs> it's Bats. rough oh, get you dude. every time dude when he when he's like Dominic, Dominic. <laughs> oh my god bro pesci's the best dude the pesci's pesci. awesome pesci's he's incredible. another one of my favorites, what about yeah. uh when it comes to chicken wings are you do you like the flats or the drumsticks Ooh. Oh, I, I think I think the one percenters are the flats. I'm a drumstick guy. You're a drumstick <laughs> yeah. for a my, my, my daughter eats the flats. I'm like, who the hell eats these? Women. Anybody, that's who. Are you a flat guy? Uh, me, oh, me. these are flats. <laughs> freaking strewns of this guy. Oh man. Yeah. What dude. about uh, your Cheeto products? Do you like puffed or crunchy better? I'd have to go puffed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Elite few. Wow. I thought for yeah. sure you were oh, going crunchy oh. on that. I would have guessed. Did you, you really? Yeah. You were the first uh, because of the drumstick. Like three people maybe just yeah, say puffed. puffed. Yeah. You are. Like, you are. Like he, cheese curls and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a cheese ball man myself cheese balls yeah they're good puff cheese balls is yeah the, uh, puff, correct puff's the way to go wow he you educated are... man like himself enters right. the puff that's club a, a, this... a, a refined gentleman goes that's right my yeah. friend said. <laughs> we, it's we, a gentleman's <laughs> cheeto this this is like the 154th episode you are the third person to say puffed just <laughs> like, yeah we've only asked wow. like we haven't we've what, asked like 50 people maybe justin yeah but yeah you are you're the yeah, because we did that was the question later in later in the game. But yeah, yeah, it's you, Scott Keating, and Mickey Bats and Justin. But you know. I like the trivia questions though; these are good ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Where that came from later on in the show? Oh, you <laughs> All right, just the final question: How much time would it take you to fix Matt's nose? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, unfortunately, I got out of the miracle business a couple ah! years ago. <laughs> no, nah, we're just kidding. No nose. I, I, I'm, I'm good at noses. I yeah. can fix any nose. Hey, man, you're you're an. I mean, you need to be freaking Pablo Picasso <laughs> to fix this one, buddy. Look at yeah. look at this guy. Right, Come on. Yeah. Away. dude. You can see the car- if I go. I mean, I don't want to get too gross, but you can see the cartilage. If I go like this, yeah. you see my cartilage sticking out. It's- it looks like it's taking a lead towards second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay, let's get into it here. So Joe, here you were born in South Philly, the nice, the nice Southwest. Irish name, Southwest, Southwest Philly, Southwest Philadelphia. Oh, all right. So born in Southwest, right? Uh, uh-huh. You know, you were one of 12 kids, Ooh, right? Sorry. One of 12. Yeah, uh-huh. man. 12 kids. Justin, what? You're one of seven, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, one of six. Well, yeah, I make seven. Yeah, one of seven. And me and Tom were, were I was, you know, we're two of four. So, yeah. But you did Catholic school going all the way up. Where, so uh, Where are you in the 12? I'm the sixth child and also the third son. So. Wow. Middle child, middle child syndrome everywhere. Yeah, wow. we just we we really. I mean, I'm dating us, but we released the the middle child, the middle bro, the middle brother episode today on the show with Mike. Five. Oh, did you really? Yeah, yeah. Three three middle brothers. I'm a middle brother. Justin's a middle brother, and yep. then you know the guy we had on the show, Mike Fox. With middle brother. twelve Nothing kids, wrong. is there really a middle child? <laughs> like with if three, I six, can see it. They, they do count me as the middle. I, I'm considered the middle. Yeah. If there's yeah. six of them and he's number six, halfway to 12 that are is six. Like, yeah. like one of three and they're the second. And there's like legitimately like a, you yeah. know, middle child syndrome. Like it doesn't see, you see, you see. Well, right you'd have now. to think yeah. like one through 12, you'd have to think like five through seven. They're all like getting the middle they're child syndrome. Middles. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When we had, <laughs> I mean, he's only ever seen a, you know, Godfather three. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe there is <laughs> Nice. So, okay, you went, uh, you grew up, you did Catholic school in Southwest Philadelphia. How was that? You know, uh, it was, it was good. Yeah. Was, I, were I was, were I, a lot of clergy in the classroom still then? Yeah, there was, uh, no, in the classroom you had some nuns. Yeah. I, I, I'd say maybe about, maybe about 30% nuns. Okay. And then, you know, the rest were just kind of teachers. Yeah. Were they it still hitting you? Back then or what? All right, so look, I was I was bad in grade school, especially yeah. sixth grade. 
The one time I got hit was by a guy, you know, rest her soul, Miss Cook. So I had her for homeroom, and Miss Cook used to be a nun and then left. And, I, and I'll be honest, I was so bad in benediction. I was talking bullshit. And, and uh, she, uh, yeah, she let me have it afterwards. I, I took a couple of whacks from her umbrella. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> umbrella. It was, uh, it was, yeah, it was, but it was good. Uh, but she, she was honestly, she was a great teacher. Yeah, She's yeah. A great teacher. She just, you just, yeah, you just one, one straw too many, man. That well, I, no, since back. I was sixth grade. I earned it, man. I, I, I was bad <laughs> at sixth grade. Yeah. Hey, man. You know, I'll tell you this. There was like, I, I'd have to say I had some teachers that weren't so great, but there, I was also not a good student. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's, you know, you got to cut them a little slack, especially dealing with back then. We were fucking animals. You know what yeah. I mean? Nuts. But and it's it, nice to it, hear a little accountability. You know what? Yes, oh, I totally. did get hit, but I kind of oh, was I asking it, I for it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, and then I went to West Catholic High School in West Philadelphia. And that oh, was a lot of- you went to West Catholic? Yeah, I, I was know a couple people that went there. So yeah. I, I graduated in 1990. I was the first year to graduate from the co-ed. They, they combined them in my senior year. Oh, and that was that was Christian Brothers, and that was that was a good experience. It's funny. I got busted cheating in Spanish class, twelfth grade, and uh, with Mister Mister Manila. So I would, you know, we sat in alphabetical order. Yeah, and I was all the way on the opposite end of the room, and the principal, Brother Frank, comes walking around. He pops in and say, say hello, and I had a sheet of paper with a bunch of translations written. <laughs> under my test yeah I spotted that shit from the doorway man uh, it was dude. <laughs> no bueno dude we had no, I, no bueno no yeah <laughs> <laughs> we had uh i know for me the move was size two font is what you would do is you i mean i mean i would get someone to type it out on si- size two font and then you just had that in your hand and then if you needed to you could crinkle it up and put it whatever uh-huh. you know but yeah it was i'm with you that stuff dude i mean what are you gonna do hey you, if you ain't cheating you ain't trying you know That's what i'm right. saying hey yeah. man nice. i would do the uh i read it on my thigh and wear mesh shorts oh <laughs> look at you mr clever well, we move. went to Catholic school. You weren't wearing mesh shorts. Nah, you no. had little pants on. And I had, a, oh, I had um, a Spanish final the one time, and my teacher told my principal, like, hey, he's going to fail. He's going to fail this class and uh, for the year because, you know, whatever. I needed, like, a 90 on the final. <laughs> and so I guess they were giving the exams, and it was, like, teachers that – it wasn't your teacher giving the exam. Like, you yeah. would go to a classroom, someone else would – and luckily they sat me next to a kid that was really good at Spanish. I was like, yo, I need your help. You got to give me your answers. And uh-huh. he was like, yeah, whatever. And I got like a, I think I got a 90 or whatever, whatever I needed to pass. It might've been an 87, but it like, it Still. was what passed me. Yeah. Good was en- like, it was good enough. I love that kid. I forget his name. I wish I remembered it. But yeah. Shout out. Yeah, give him a shout out. Yeah, I know. Show. <laughs> Dude, oh, yeah. He, but yeah, he, uh, you know, she fucked that. Whatever. She just yeah. screwed up. What <laughs> We've you gonna covered say? her. Yeah. What are you going to say, Justin? My one of my brothers who went to Catholic school, he would do uh he would tape it to the back side of his tie. So when he sat, he could look oh, at it. I and forgot then stand about up. that. Yeah. I no, I would stuff the stuff inside the tie, cheat sheets. Yeah. yeah put them inside the tie, slide them out, slide them Dude. right in. I forgot idea. all about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The good old tie. Uh, tie. tie. <laughs> That's a that great one. idea. That's a Was that one. Spud that did that? Yeah, the Shout old clever Spud. bastard. Shout out, Spud. Nice. So you did, so you went Catholic school all the way through K through 12. And K then through 12. you graduated. So when you went to West Catholic originally, it was an all boys school, but then your senior Took year. Three years. Senior yeah. year, they combined it. Yeah. Nice. It girls and guys. Dude. I'll tell you, I used to work at a place, right? And it was like mostly guys that worked there. And then we used to have this thing where it was like a girl would come into the restaurant, right? And it'd be like mostly guys working that day. So a girl would come in and on the street, she's a six, right? Uh But you haven't seen a girl all day, right? Uh, So she walks in. Oh, yeah. You're looking at her like, (laughs) oh, my God, the freaking... Kathy Ireland just walk in, you know. Yeah, what I yeah. mean? Did you get that at like when Catholic school or you know an all boys school? From what I heard, they're a lot of fun when it's like an all boys school. But you get you know what? I I gotta tell you, it was it definitely was different flavors. It was so, it was totally more laid back when it was all boys. Yeah. You know, but like you get a bunch of teenage boys, you combine them with girls. Definitely rather have it with the girls there. And yeah, oh, there, yeah. Was, there was a lot of pretty girls, and, you know, and uh, it kept you kept you on your toes. 
Yeah, sure. you know, it kept you looking at eye candy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, hey man, I'll tell you that Catholic schoolgirl shit that ain't a fetish for no reason, you know. What I mean? <laughs> but nice, okay, so let's keep it moving. So while you're coming up, right, you did like you know, you did like the regular sports kind of stuff, you did like baseball and football, but you're real, you really got hooked on and you caught the craze was the hockey craze that just swept through the city, right? Yep. So what would you got going on with, with hockey? Well, it's funny. And I never even thought of hockey and, um, and I, I played football and then somehow one day after school, the guys invited me to come play hockey. Yeah. And I started playing. I'm like, Oh shit. I like this game. They were all on roller skates. And, um, the, uh, I was playing on feet. And <laughs> a funny story, man, is, and I decided, I'm like, you know, I really like this. I ended up quitting football and playing street hockey. And then my first pair of skates was, there was a pair of skates. Like every, when you have 12 kids, everything is hand-me-downs. Yeah, yeah. So my older sister had a pair of skates. I started skating on her skates. <laughs> <laughs> they were the white one. They were white with yeah. the red and blue stripes. I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember. <laughs> like no ankle support, just like no the ones you would get. Oh, vinyl. White, baby. white vinyl. Oh, <laughs> And then we go, and finally, I don't know how I talked my mom into buying me and my, my younger brother a pair of inline skates Ooh. at a store called Jefferson Ward. It predates Clover. Yeah. These are some old, and I, and I, and I kind of sucked, but that one day, it was like, I remember I stole the puck, ended up on a breakaway, and uh, scored a goal, and then that was it. The goals just kept coming, man. Yeah. I turned in, I was, I turned into a really good inline, you know, like roller hockey player. Yeah, and then the played played some ice hockey. We had a group of guys from Southwest. We would we would rent the ice every Sunday night, dude. And uh, to get the money to buy uh, to get to buy the hockey equipment, I was selling pretzels <laughs> and uh, and Eagles hats down at the down at the Eagles games for my at cousin. the vet at the vet. We used to oh. run around getting chased by L and I all the time. <laughs> for, uh, for selling unlicensed products li license and imaging we're chasing you down li li license and inspection oh license but and inspection okay. license and inspection so i was selling pretzels and i and i bought you know i bought all my ice hockey equipment and started playing that on sunday nights and uh it was a lot of fun it was yeah. it was really it was a lot of fun dude i love that like you had such like you knew like in downtown like down there you knew like hey i want to make some quick cash i buy a box of pretzels in the morning I just walk around the parking lot, get sell them, get my shit, and get out of there. Like you knew, like you could find easy cash going. What you sell them like a dime or a nickel or whatever the hell they were, and you make Not your money back and quarter yeah. a piece, five for an hour. Oh my cousin, man, my cousin had a business down there, so I used to work for him. And uh, but it, you know, listen, I'd go down to an Eagles game. I'd be you know tenth grade. I I might make three hundred bucks on an afternoon down there. Just selling pretzels, pretzels and hats. Oh, cleaned up, cleaned up. Yeah. Awesome. You're Yo, down I've, there, I've been burned with some hats by by dudes down there for sure. Yeah, but it was it was, it was honestly it was a great gig. It really yeah. was. Yeah, and you're you're walking around, you're yucking it up. You see a group of girls tailgating. You chat. You know what I mean? Like seems like it's like a job. I got to yeah. start selling pretzels and hats, dude. Uh -huh. was, <laughs> dude, I've seen. I'll tell you this. I remember one time. This was. I made uh, good money doing plastic surgery. But the best <laughs> money I ever made was pretzels and hats down at San. Dude, down it's it's cash. Down at yeah. It was cash. Dude, I remember, God, this might have been 09 when, uh, when, uh, when we were playing the, uh, the Yankees in the series. Or it might have been 08. But either way, um, we were down there, and there was a game where we played uh, – God, we might have played Atlanta that day. The Eagles played Atlanta, and then I think the Phillies were either in the NLCS or the World Series that night. And then oh, – When we did both? No, no, this is another time. And Pearl Jam was having a concert that night also, right? Yes. Okay. So it was like a whole thing. So we went down there at 8 in the morning. We're fucking, you know, shotgun and bush pounders and, like, have a whole day, right? We're playing beer pong and this dude, we're playing like whatever out tailgating. This dude comes up, right? And he's like, he has all these shirts and he's like trying to sell. We're like, bro, get the hell out of here, right? And I'm like, dude, he's like, you won't make that. And I was like, if I make this, you're giving me two shirts. And he's like, oh, yeah, you ain't going to make it. And I sunk it. I was like, give me my goddamn shirts. He gave me the shirt. Then all of a sudden this truck pulls up, right? This dude gets out of the truck and just slams this guy on the ground. He's like, what did I tell you about selling here? You don't sell here. Give me that goddamn And like took really? his money, 
And, the, and then wow. the guy's like, come on, man. Why you got to do this to me? Come on. And he's like, you're a piece of shit. And he's like, come on, you just at least give me a ride back. Right. And the dude yeah. had this big truck and he's in the front and like he gets back in his car after beating him and taking his money, gets back in the car. Right. And the dude's like, come on, you at least give me a ride back. And he's like, yeah, fine. Hop in the bed. The dude, the, the dude goes to get into the bed of the truck, steps on the wheel. Right. And the dude driving the truck floors it. Right. So the dude flies off the back of the truck, nails the ground. And we were just like, what the hell is going yeah, on? Crazy. I was like, Jesus, these guys are nuts down here. Yeah, like, four. Yeah, that's a shame. The other guy, he's just trying to eat, man. He's just trying to eat and feed his kids. Yeah. Yeah. They do they, get crazy down there. They were no. I get, I mean, I could see it being very territorial if you're, you know, if yeah, you're making money, you got to know yeah. who's, who's doing what and all that. But yeah. nice. So you had a little hustle down there. You bought your hockey equipment. Dude, I'll tell you what, man. There was a big hockey craze that hit the cunt. Like, you wow, had it in the, in the city. It was huge. Like, the bullies came in in the late 70s. They were freaking beat the, beat the commies. They won the Stanley Cup yeah. twice. Like, they were just the – they, dude, they beat the Russians. I know. Did you guys, did you guys ever watch that game when they played the Russians? Yeah. Uh, just highlights. Yeah, yeah, highlights. Oh, I'm telling you, man. That's My buddy had that on VHS years ago. We watched that. That's actually an impressive game to watch. You know, the, the Russians quit. I think it was in the yeah. second period, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And the coach, Fred Scher, said, well, listen, our theory is we're not going to let them cross the blue line. Man, I watched that game. You know, those guys were getting all oh, pulverized, man. Yeah. Hard, yeah. hard hit. Dude, the one uh, they so like in the they did a documentary on HBO a couple of years ago, the Barcy Boys, phenomenal documentary. And Ed Schneider talks about he's like, yeah, the the Rus the Russians left the ice. They go into the locker room and they're like, we're not playing anymore. We're not playing. And Ed Snyder went down. He's like, fine, then I'm not gonna pay you. Yeah, and right. That's the reason they went out. And they yeah. went back out. And and then. God, what the one dude, I think his name is like Ed something, but Ed, he, Ed Van Imp. He Ed Van Imp. That guy. He, Ed Van Imp. He, he, he oh, flop, hits, hits Var Harlem off, crushes him with an elbow. Yeah, as yeah, soon, yeah. Like, dude, that just set the tone. They had no, they were, they were completely defeated, completely defeated, <laughs> mentally and physically yeah. destroyed. Great. Great for America. You know, how about, totally. it? you know, so I was watching, I was, you know, back in the eighties when the flyers were tough. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember, I guess we were playing Montreal, uh, the Canadians in the, uh, in the Eastern conference finals. Yeah. And then at the end of the, uh, Paul Lemieux would always shoot the puck at the end of the warm up into the other team's empty net. And Dave Brown and Chico Resch went out to stop him from doing it. They had a big bench clearing brawl before the game even started. What? Yeah, it was pretty I wild. Didn't, I didn't know yeah. that. The Eastern Conference Finals. I love wow. that. Didn't I we wish beat... the Flyers were good again, man. It sucks oh. that they're, like, struggling these last, yeah. like, so many years. Like, I, don't, I don't even watch them anymore, man. They're, they're terrible. Are. Dude, yeah. they use the, but playoff yeah, hockey is the most intense oh, so of anything. It is so intense. It's like, funny that you say that. I always, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Claude Lemieux fan, but I am a Claude Lemieux fan, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, this guy would have 10 goals all year, and then in the playoffs, he'd have 15 goals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, you know, like the guys missed the playoffs, man. He stepped it up. Yeah, yeah. I think playoff hockey is is very intense. Good time to watch it. Oh yeah, the best. I mean, yeah. we've been at games where you're like on the edge of your, especially like when they're down and the Flyers are good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was like Penguins Flyers, and like we were at this playoff game, and it's just like from the drop of the puck, it's like you're on the edge of your seat. It's back and forth, back and forth, and like you're just going nuts. It's like so. And they're physical. It's all awesome. physical, especially uh, the those. Game, yeah. yeah, the game's right. so much faster in person too, compared to watching it on TV. I remember the first time watching a hockey game. We watched the Flyers. I was fortunate enough. A friend's dad took us, and we were four row. We were almost at center ice, four rows back from the glass. And I was just amazed at how fast that game is in person, man. And how big they, they are. are. Oh, oh huge, huge, huge. Dude, they are fucking tough. Hockey players are tough. I said. Yeah. John, I used to work at a at a bar called Vinny T's. It was on the main line, and Leclaire used to come in. John Leclaire used yeah. to come in all the time. That dude had shoulders like an ox, man. He was yeah. he was pretty he was a pretty like built guy, you know. I was like, God, could you? Because they can get up so fast, they get so fast. Like if they get some speed behind totally. them, and they'll clean your clock, bro. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. did you ever see? The, did you watch the documentary Crimes and Penalties on Netflix? Yeah. Oh, 
Joe. It sounds good. You got it. It's about so it's it's about a minor league hockey team in Danbury, Connecticut that was bought by a mob boss named Jimmy Galanti, who was like they based the Sopranos after Jimmy Galanti, right? And they he bought this hockey team, gave it to his son, and they bought like all the biggest freaking uh, you know bruisers and like they were totally. So just, this is like, a true story. True story. Yeah. Yeah. And what's it and called again? Crimes and Penalties. It's on Netflix. Crimes. Oh, yeah. I'll have to check that out. You will love it. It's one, honestly, it's it's phenomenal. It's so right up good. there it's with so The Godfather good. 1 and 2. What's your favorite? <laughs> you guys got a favorite? Look, I'm going to ask a trivia question. You okay. guys got a favorite hockey movie? So, would you go slap shot or, uh, oh my God. Well, dude, damn? you got to remember, oh, really? we, we, really we were good. also, we're I was, all... I was, I was eight when blood. Mighty Ducks came out. You know what I mean? Ah, like, not Mighty Ducks. You got to go slap shot or young blood. Have you yeah, seen Goon? Goon is so good. Uh, the oh, guy, Sean, Sean William, William Scott, Scott. Stifler. Dude, it's it's a really good movie. I was surprised. Dude, really? I thought it was going to be stupid. Dude. It's good, man. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Ray Dunn. Schreiber. Lev Schreiber. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude, Goon is a phenomenal. We need a good movie. hockey movie. We haven't yeah. had a good hockey movie in a while. Well, Miracle, yeah. Miracle is probably my favorite. Miracle is good. Movie. Miracle is good. But is that dude, based off the eighty Olympic team? Yeah. You haven't seen that either. I haven't seen. Oh that my god, Joe! Golly, dude! I, I'll tell. I've been in the books, man. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, you've been, you've been, you've been, you know, feeding your mind. I got you. Yeah. But, uh, dude, I'll tell you, that's one thing. Cause like in the, in Philadelphia, the hockey craze was huge from the late seventies all the way to the nineties, even with like Lindros and and LeClaire and uh, Rod Brindamore and and Hextall and and all those guys. Oh yeah. Brindamore is a workhorse, but like that, the the hockey craze is still big, but I think it went national for like younger fans when the mighty ducks came in. Right. And like, I agree with you on that. And like, for us, dude, I we all had rollerblades, and like in the summer, we were playing hockey. There's this bank by us called the Continental Bank, and it had a big parking lot, and we would play hockey there every night in the summer when we were kids. And it was like everyone had rollerblades, everyone had a stick. We're practicing all the time. We're put. I remember I used to put like uh, masking tape on my stick yeah. so it looked like not but it would come right off you know what i mean because it was <laughs> yeah, so shitty not real tape yeah, yeah. yeah but like so I, yeah i got a funny story when we were playing in high school we used to play in this parking lot in southwest philadelphia called the corman suites it was a rectangular parking lot so it was like an apartment complex and it had a curb that went all the way around so it, it was almost like like a wall yeah. And I'm not going to say the family's name, but somebody parked a car there. This car was a busted down piece of shit. <laughs> it's called a Ford Fairlane. Never even seen it. It looks like it was from the 1950s. Y'all, I'm not bullshitting. We picked up this car because it was in the middle of what we called our rink. Yeah. There was probably about 10 high school kids. On our, we picked this car up and carried it to the end of the lot. <laughs> wow. I swear to God. And we were all laughing. We were like, yo, this guy's going to come out and say, how the hell did the car move? <laughs> He's lucky you just moved it and you didn't smash it to pieces. You know what I mean? Oh man, oh, man. you're a lucky dude, man. I'll tell you, yeah, I, I have good. a I have a daughter, and honestly, it's like, is there is there anything you could love more? My God, dude. It's no, just, I got so best. I got I have two daughters and a son, and a granddaughter. Oh, you're Everyone blessed. Sets up. Yeah. You're blessed. I don't know, man. For me, I don't know. I don't no. have I don't have a son. Right. But like, I don't know. I feel like it's, you can love the daughter differently because like, you know, like I'll be able to kiss her on the cheek for the rest of her life and like hug her and like, you know, I guess just be more affectionate towards her. Whereas like eventually with the son, I'd have to I'd have to stop that. You know what I mean? And I'd have to be harder on them, you know, because it's just, it's, it's just you know, it is. It, it's, it's, you it's different. You love them. You, you love them all the same. Yeah, they're slightly different. I, I remember. I think it's very easy as a stereotype to, as a male to think, Hey, I got to have a son. I got to have a son. Mm-hmm. And, um, I got to tell you, man, my two daughters are every equally as bit as precious as my son. I love being a dad. I love being yeah. a granddad and, and every one of them is a blessing. Look, they're, yeah. they're just, they're different. It's funny. I got a good buddy of mine. Um, my, my oldest brother's, uh, best friend, my oldest brother, is about 57 years old. I'm turning 50. And his best friend has been in, they've been friends for 50 years. So ever since I remember him, he's uh, he's in the family. 
And he always says, look, if you got a daughter, you got somebody that's going to take care of you the rest of your life when you're old. He's like, your sons, they're not going to take care of you. Yeah, your daughter's, yeah. your daughter's going to take care of it. But look, they are, they are just, every one of them is a blessing from God, man. Yeah. And you just, you'll do different things with them. With her, I watch Barbie movies. Yeah. With my son, I do boxing. She does gymnastics. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, I enjoy watching her do gymnastics as much as I love watching him do boxing and wrestling yeah yeah so it's just yeah whatever you know as long as they're you know comp- doing you know just doing something right like you just doing love something. seeing it yeah 100 percent, man I, i'm with dude i'll tell you like i had the same thought like when my wife was pregnant i'm like i want it you know like you're right it is a, it is a stereotype like you want it to you i always like my son i would talk to like even before i'd be like when i have a son you know but honestly, now that I have a daughter, I was like, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't trade it for the world, man. I wouldn't, man. It's just, yeah, absolutely. it's the most special thing in the world. It really is. So yeah. nice. All right. So let's keep it moving. Uh, hockey. Yeah. Hockey was everything back then, but I want to keep it going. So you graduated from high school. Uh, you're, you're, you're starting at community college. You're working at a bar, right? And you're after high school, you, when you graduated high school, you weren't like you, the biggest guy, right? Like you were, like you were lean, but you were a little, like you're a little. No, nah, I was skinny, man. I looked like okay. a crackhead. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> yeah, I was built like a dart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, I like the call. I was aerodynamic. <laughs> Yo, built like a dart. That is hilarious. Yeah. So nice. I never heard that. So okay. So, but it's, you're, you know, like you're a younger dude, like early, late teens, early twenties, you got a girl, right? And you were, you know, everyone's got by, I don't give a fuck. You could be Rod, Ronnie Coleman in his prime. You got by everyone's body conscious, right? Like, yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like you'll see, everyone will see somebody say something. So what happened that made you wanting to get into, to, cause you would eventually get into fitness and training and everything like that. Yeah. So kind of what was the catalyst to getting into that? Yeah, so yeah, I was very skinny, 127 pounds when I graduated uh, high school. Yeah, I was about 5'10". Yeah, so um, so you were a string bean. Yeah, I was a string bean. I was yeah. a real string bean. And then my, my oldest daughter, who will be 30 this year, I met her mother, you know, who was very, very attractive at the time. And, you know, I got to be honest, she was always, always checking out other guys, man. It drove me nuts. Yeah, it just, you know, it made this feeling where, OK, you know, the I'm not good enough feeling. And then and I'll said, all right, I'll show you. And, yeah. and I, I had a, uh, a good buddy of mine that was really in the weightlifting and bodybuilding at the time. Yeah. And uh, we were working together at a seafood restaurant where we were in high school, you know, bread yeah. and flounder and all that shit. So he's like, yeah. come in the gym with me. Yeah. So this guy takes me to the gym, my buddy, my buddy, Mike Pye, P.S. and Tino. And uh, great guy. He's out in California now. And um, shout out. So, yeah, shout out. One of great human being. Nice. And Mike, Mike, Mike teaches me how to weightlift, man. I put on a quick 40 pounds in 11 months. Damn. So, yeah, and it's Jeez. funny. Every, every and 40 person, pounds of fucking some yoke. Muscle, like, muscle, oh, my muscle. God. In 11, everybody thought I started doing steroids. They were like, what the <laughs> hell are you doing? Well, Mike, yo, yo, Mike had me eating every two hours. I would eat two dozen hard boiled egg whites a day. You know, I was eating and lean. I was eating about 5,000 calories a day, maybe 15 grams of fat. And uh, it was, you know, every two hours, just eating and just training, training heavy. I was going to this gym. Oh, man, shit. I got to give a shout out to, to the gym in South Philly. Body World Fitness <laughs> on Pashunk Avenue. I mean, listen, man, these guys were animals up there. Big. The, the motto was go heavy or go home. So I start Love training it. up there and uh, really get into it. Now I'm going into college, you know, and uh, I'm coming off the subway. And before my workout, so everybody at that gym had a nickname. Yeah. My nickname was Joe Pretz, sure for Joe Pretzel. Because <laughs> I, I would walk in, I would stop and get two, like, soft Philly pretzels. And I would eat them. I would carve up before carve my up. workout. Yeah. And a water ice. So I would get to, so I became. Did Joe you Pretz. dip the pretzel in the water ice? Sometimes. It's funny. I'm, I'm, I'm riding down South, down Broad Street, probably about a year and a half ago. And the gym, the gym manager back in the day was this guy, Frank D. Frank D sees me. 
He's like, yo, Doc Pretz. <laughs> so, nice. so I'm up there. I'm training like an animal, man. You know, yeah. and then I put I put this 40 pounds on, you know, and it, uh, it's funny. I had like a reverse anorexia going for a while. If this makes any sense, man. It was like, I would say, all right, if I, I started at 127, right? Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, if I gained 10 pounds, I'd be happy. No matter what, I put that 10 pounds on. I always looked in the mirror and saw that 127 pound crackhead. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and that li that lingered like that for years until I got to tell you, man, like in, well into my 20s. Yeah. And then finally, uh, you know, I, I was like, OK, no, nah, you look good, Joe. Stop that stuff, man. Yeah. And um, but yeah, you know, so yeah. the weightlifting changes my life. And uh, mentally, that stuff sticks with you, bro. I don't give a shit who you, you are. Think, you think, um, yeah, it does. Do you think that has something to do with your profession? Maybe why you chose to go where you're going? Like you, you you're physically looking at you know and you're, you're not getting enough and then maybe that's something where you thought you found an interest in or no so it was it's interesting you know the how I, how i got into that was um so my mom is very religious you know and um she uh i ended up getting kicked out of the house because i wouldn't go to church on sundays i'm coming I'm bartending now, you know, I'm bartending in college. I'm coming home three, four in the morning. Yeah. You know, closing the bar on a Saturday night. Yeah. And, and God bless my mom. Here she comes waking me up for 930 minutes. I'm like, mom, oh. I'm not going to, ch it ain't happening. I'm sleeping. Yeah. 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 You got to go then. Yeah. So I, I, I had to go, you know, because so I get my apartment and uh, I get an apartment. I have to pick up an extra night bartending. And uh, I was picking up Wednesday nights. I was working down at the Radisson Hotel at the Philadelphia airport, which is no longer a Radisson. Yeah. We, we used to get a lot of the uh, we had a contract with U.S. Air. Oh, so nice. a lot of the U.S. Air staff would stay there. Mm -hmm. It's a Wednesday night. The bar is dead as can be. Yeah. And I'm sitting there talking to a guy by the name of Bob Hicks, who I believe is passed at this time. Bob was in his. So this is uh, this is around 1992. OK. And Bob was in his early 50s then. OK. And I, I tried looking this guy up. So a chance conversation takes my life in a completely different direction. Yeah. And um, I wasn't going to go to college. I hated school. I was always the class clown. Yeah. I wanted a Trans Am. And I was going to become a cop to get, I was on thinking is how am I going to get money to buy a Trans Am? I'm going to be a cop and go into police force. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At the last minute, my older brother talks me into, he's like, look, you got to go to college. You're going to be an accountant major. He was the first tambourino at a college degree. Yeah. So I, I go to community college. I'm majoring in accounting. I'm doing horrible. I'm doing really, really bad. I hate it. Yeah. So now I'm into this fitness thing. And this guy, Bob, sitting at the bar, it's just me and him. And he's like, Joe, I got to get healthy. You know, I'm overweight. My blood pressure is up. Yeah. You know, I want to start working out. What do you think? I'm like, Bob, first of all, get a grilled chicken. You know, stop eating all this fatty red meat that you're eating, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I said, you got to start lifting. You need to be doing this, this, and this. He's like, Joe, you're so passionate about this stuff. What are you doing in accounting? You're doing horrible. You're failing out. Yeah. Go be a physical therapist. Yeah. He was like, you love this stuff. Yeah. And I, and I went home. This is three weeks into the January semester. Yeah. And I'm saying, damn, why didn't I ever think of that? Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to change my major to physical therapy. The next morning, I wake up. I go upstairs. And I, my older brother was living in the apartment above me. Yeah. I'm like, hey, look, I'm going to change my major. No, I don't do it. You can still be a physical therapist. I said, no, I think this is the right thing to do. I'm, I'm going to change my major. And then I went. I talked to the counselor. And now I was going to go pre-physical therapy. Yeah. So I was going to go. I was going to major in something called uh, kinesiology. to study of movement. Yeah. So that's through the Department of Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance. I go talk to the guy that's running this department. Uh -huh. And this guy, he's a temple. Can I give, can I give his name? Yeah. Sh shout out whoever you want. Shout out to Bill O'Do. Great guy. Shout out. Bill Bill the William show. O'Do. So he was, um, he was giving me friction about changing my major three weeks in. So finally, I'm like, I'm like, Dr. O'Do, is there a problem I don't know about? You've been giving me nothing but... So he reluctant. He's like, no, no, no. He changes my major. And I got to tell you, this is the first time I take school serious. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm 22 years old now. You know, I was an accounting major with a 0 0.67 GPA, just not opening the books. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm three weeks into the January semester and all of a sudden school is interesting me. I'm like, oh shit, I like this stuff. Yeah. I like what I'm learning. I start doing, yeah. I start to do good. That summer I had to take uh, anatomy and physiology. Uh, so I took anatomy one and summer one and I did outstanding. It was almost the top of the class. Yeah. And uh, it's all I did was read, man. This is the first time I'm reading books. Yeah. And then, so now 
we have uh, uh, Anatomy 2 and Summer 2. Uh-huh. And I'm a little pissed off. I didn't get the top spot for Anatomy 1. I, I finished in the top five. And Dr. Odu was teaching part two. And uh, so we, t- we took a liking to each other. Every uh, couple of weeks, we had a questions, you know, a multiple questioning exam. It'd be 100, 100 questions. Mm-hmm. I was finishing these tests in like 15 minutes. Oh, just I'm not bullshitting. It. Crushing yeah. it, man. Crushing it. I don't think I ever got more than more than three wrong on a test. Yeah. Most, most of them are like one wrong. And I was, I remember there was this one guy that was one point ahead of me. It was just cumulative. Yeah. They just added up all your points. So I would go to Dr. O'Dill. I'm like, where am I? Where am I in the standings? And the other dude that was ahead of me was also named Bill. So after the second exam, I go see him. He's like, now Bill is two points ahead of you. Yo, and it fired me up. Oh. To make a long story short, I end up passing this guy. Yeah. You know, so I finished at the top spot in that in summer two for that. But I realized I was like, you know what? Physical therapy, this is no knock on physical therapists because I love my physical therapist. I was like, physical therapist isn't enough for what I want to do. I want to be a surgeon. I'm going to med school. And I, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to be a doc. I wanted to be a surgeon. Yeah. And I was always, I was always handy fixing stuff. Yeah. Like if I wasn't a surgeon today, I'd be a carpenter. Yeah. I, something I with your hands. Fix, something yeah. with my hands, that immediate result. So I ended up changing my major again. And, um, and then I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to be a chemistry major. And uh, it was interesting. You know, this, well, I only, well, I only took two years of, uh, yeah. I'm going to make this, I think, is an important point to make that I'm about yeah. to make for, for listeners. Yeah. I, I thought I was horrible in math. And I think a large part of the, uh, the people in this country say, hey, I can't do math. Right. Yeah, I would agree. And I only took two years of math in high school. That's all we needed back then. I took yeah. algebra one as a freshman and I did horrible. I thought I was doing ABCs. Yeah. I take geometry, did a little better. Junior year was supposed to take uh, algebra two. I was like, I'm not taking. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to become a chemistry major. I need three semesters of calculus to graduate with a chem degree. And I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? Jesus. So here I am. I got to take, but now I'm a good student. I got to take pre, I got to take pre-calculus, which was essentially algebra and trig. Yeah. Listen, I did great in this class. I studied really hard. And then, and then um, I, I got an A in that class. Yeah. So now I take, I go, I, I take chemistry one and I'm just, I'm going to class and I'm writing my ass off, taking all these notes, not paying attention. And then I was going home and I would study strictly from the textbook and I would do all, I would buy a solutions manual for every textbook I had. And I would do all the problems in the back of the chapter with the solutions manual. Okay. And I would end up never even studying from the notes that I took. So chemistry two, I stopped going to class. I just taught myself at home and I would just show up for the exams. Yeah. And I was, I was getting all A's and it was yeah. funny. I, that, so now I take, I take, I take, I had to take three semesters of calculus and I'm not saying this to brag. Okay. I'm just saying what hard work and determination will do. Yeah. I, I never went to a single calc class and I have about a 98 average in calc. Yeah. I, w- I would show up and take the exams. And it's crazy. Here I went from a guy being like a math retard <laughs> to a guy that was teaching himself calculus and showing up for exams. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like if you look, and I don't want to get stereotypical here, but I'm going to use the Asian community, okay? Yeah. Where they say that like the, the, the saying, I can't do math doesn't exist there. It, no. It's not, they, they work until they get it. And I've been on both sides there. It's amazing to see what hard work yeah. and determination. Yeah. So I, I'm a firm believer in that mentality, man. You got to have that mentality. Yeah. And the sky's the limit. Yeah. I don't put anything past anybody. If this person wants it bad enough, they're going to work hard enough. They're going to get it done. Yeah. Especially with math. Like if you just with follow math. the book, it's just step follow by the step. book, man. That's right. Go right, right down the line at the end of the, at the end of the semester, yeah. you have the hardest solution, you know, you just yeah. follow yeah. the book. I'll tell you, dude, the real story is though, like you came, like you're a kid from South Philly, you came up through the Catholic school system and the system itself is kind of what what kind of put it in your mind that oh I can't do math oh I you know I'm not into the reading and whatever bullshit right and it's because of like the curriculum they provided just didn't catch your attention didn't get your magic like didn't get nah. you didn't get you pumping but as soon as you found yeah. something that got you clicking you were off to the races right? I, I hate I hate to knock you know I don't I don't know how they passed me in freshman algebra. <laughs> Listen, this is, I, yeah. I had no idea what I was doing. I think West yeah. Catholics and, closed now, so you can say. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, I just, I hate them. 
but there is there's a lot of people unfortunately getting pushed through the system yeah well that's, get... that's a whole problem in itself yeah, you yeah. probably spend a week of podcast on. yeah oh, so yeah. i'm not so even gonna go the there the thing is they evaluate the teachers and they evaluate them by who's passing like the kids yeah. that are graduating they're just herding passing. cattle yeah it's not about you know so they can teach the the test you know what yeah. i mean or whatever yeah. and so people just learn the test but they're not really basically learning like what you were doing to kind of think for themselves and do for themselves and make mm -hmm. it you know yeah work hard yeah you know? so all right that at this point we have come to the time of the show where we do our new favorite segment <laughs> it is now time for the chasing dub question segment everyone's yeah. new favorite segment yeah so yeah, yeah. everyone's yeah. new favorite segment is the Jalen dub justin question segment so Joe, Justin is going to ask you a series of questions, and if you could please provide us with your best answer. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Justin. This one's an oldie, but a goodie. If you could be an all-star in any one of the four major sports, what position in sport would you play? Ooh, great question. What position is sport as all-star? Yeah, yeah. Like you'd be good. You I know. know where he's headed with this already. Yeah, same, it. same. You got same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, I, you know what, man? Yeah. I'm going to tell you the first thing that popped in my mind, okay? Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, Tom Brady popped in my mind. Want to be a quarterback? Hell yeah. Yeah. And I and I I started thinking about money, right? So you said, I'm like, shit, where can you? It's a good point. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> where'd you play the money? Like, you know, so I was like, shit, man, NFL quarterback, they got to be making big. Uh, whatever one makes the most money, I don't know. Would I would uh, NFL be NBA based. because they're guaranteed. There's less, and uh, you know, their max less skills injuries. are pretty high. Baseball is pretty. I, I'd say baseball. Well, then I NBA. started. I, I started thinking about pitchers. Mm -hmm. I'm like shit. I don't. I, I have to. I'm gonna. I wish I knew the salaries, man. Who Only pays work the most once nowadays? every five days. Yeah, yeah. You work once every <laughs> five days. Yeah. For you know. If, if, a lot, if, though, man. Nah, I'm sticking a, with uh, quarterback. If yeah. You're, you do you're once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Once a week. You only go away eight weeks out of the year, plus the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Who would you play for? Who would I play for? Yeah. Well, shit, man. I got a Philly guy. I'd say the Eagles. Okay. All right. Uh, and, uh, all right. Good. I, I thought for sure you were going hockey. I, I would have guessed hockey. Be a, you know, a center for the Flyers. Or, you know? Nah. Yeah, yeah. So look, but I don't. Nah. You know what, man? Like, they don't get paid enough. They, well, and they're, <laughs> and they're, that and they're on the road too much. And that's a rough. I'm, I'm, fucking I'm game, a homebody. Dude. Yeah. You can yeah. make more money selling pretzels in the parking lot. Uh, yeah, you're probably not wrong. I bet you made more than Bernie Perrant did in his last year. But no, uh, right. dude, no, nah, that's a great one. Great one. Great answer. Tom, what would your answer to that be? I could be an all-star in any sport. Four Man. majors. No, the four majors. Four majors. So, I might go basketball. Yeah. I might go basketball. Because if I if I could be an all-star in any sport, it's golf, right? But golf shit, would be, that, yeah, because yeah, you're getting fucking paid, and you can and play forever. Just, and you can play forever. You don't have to train too fuck. If you train at all, you're the most fucking best trained guy out there. <laughs> you know, like yeah. No, nah, right. they're all training now. Tiger. Well, changed Tiger changed that. that. Tiger not, changed that. Yo, he was Jack, right? Oh, uh, dude, golf. Tiger was, was repping two twenty five, man. Like he yeah, was not. Yeah, bet, man. Dude, but no, he. But I'm saying like they don't have the same type of training that the N NFL or the NBA or any of them have. You know, like what do you, what do you think John right. Daly was repping? Oh my god, he was repping, <laughs> repping you know uh, 2012 Marlboro packs, Lights. And, yeah, uh, he yeah. in Milwaukee's <laughs> best. Jack. But dude, that just shows how great like how great of a game it is where like John Daly could have, like he was on par with you know Tiger was. Oh yeah. uh, shit. He's doing twelve ounce curls. That's what he's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Who would you uh who would you rather work for? The men in black or the Ghostbusters? Oh, great question. Shit, man. Uh, How do we know he doesn't work for men in black? Yeah, nah, I got wanna hunt I got, aliens or you want to hunt ghosts? Nah, I I think I'm going Ghostbusters, man. Yeah. Dude, I'd love to hang out. Because Bill I like Murray. I like that. Yeah, Bill Murray was awesome. I like that movie better. I'm going Harold Ramis, right? Harold Ramis is great, you know. You'd rather hunt. You'd rather hunt okay. ghosts than aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I'm going Ghostbusters. Right. Plus two. In in comparison of the two, also the two songs, right? You have Men in Black by Will Smith, right. and then you have Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. by Ghostbuster guy. Yeah, yeah. The Ghostbuster, Ghostbuster songs. Yeah, that was you know, way better. Yeah. 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 If you had to play for your soul, would you pick Connect Four or Jenga? Ooh, oh, I'm going Jenga. Me and my kids play that, man. Jenga's good. That's He's good. a surgeon. Yeah, He's game. got so, it. Yeah. His hands are probably crazy. Yeah. Jenga's like his game. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yo, it, 
I th- oh man, my kids managed. They had a game going. I took a picture of it. So we try and take, we leave it on the center, you know, to make it. How about if I told you they managed, it looked like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Oh. They only had one end in and the two middle, like the middle and the other end. I couldn't believe the thing was standing. Golly. It was standing on the single left block. <laughs> it gets intense. <laughs> dude, it does get in. It, dude, and if you pull, like, if you get a good, like, like a quick pull out yeah. and it doesn't, like, forget it. Do you ever play the giant Jenga? Like the Never big, big it. one? But the that's supposed, yeah. yeah, that's just supposed to be pretty fun. They're, you know, it's like two by fours cut, fun. you know, to be big. Yeah. Go ahead, Justin. One, uh, one will protect you and the other two will try to kill you. You can select between the Kool-Aid Man, the Jolly Green Giant, or Mr. Peanut. Hold on, back this up. Back this up. We got it. Let's let's marinate this. So one will protect you, mm-hmm. and two will attempt to kill you. Yes. So you have to pick one out uh, of the three to protect you, and then by that choice, the other two will be going after you. And yeah, that's okay. that's an easy one. Come on, Jolly Green Giant. Yeah. I was just gonna say the same thing. Yeah, Yo, Jolly, Jolly Green, Green Giant, Giant is fucking the Kool Aid Man up. Like <laughs> let's let's, let's not get totally it twisted. Man. And you say the peanut guy. Mr. Peanut, no, he's got a cane. Giant. Yeah, I know, but Mr. Peanut, Peanut's what the hell is he going to do? Nah, yeah. He'd be he like Yoda. Shit. Yeah. Unless, Yo, unless the Kool-Aid guy and the freaking uh, Jolly Green Giant got a peanut allergy. He ain't doing <laughs> shit. Kool-Aid was good shit, though. I drank a lot of that as a uh, kid, man. I'd be worried about Kool-Aid guy wrecking my fucking house. He's coming over. I'm like, dude, use the front door, motherfucker. Yeah. Don't come through the wall. You're yeah. staining the carpets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's oh, up? yeah. Who's your favorite piece of shit athlete? Like uh like a Lenny Dykstra or Pete Rose, like a uh, who's, your, who's your favorite piece of shit? You yeah, like, show like, that, like, like yeah. Jeremy Shockey. <laughs> yeah. Favorite favorite piece of shit. Babe Ruth. Shockey a piece I liked, of shit. I liked Marcus Yeah. <laughs> Marcus uh, Vick. I, I, I got, oh, I got. Well, you know what? If you want to look at it like that, then I'd have to go. Uh, just because I don't, I, I hate to be on air calling people a piece of shit. But with that being said, I'd have to go Mike Vick. How he was beating these dogs. Yeah, love Vick. You know, yeah. uh, you know, there, there's love other dogs. guys that yeah. I don't like. I don't, I don't like their stances and positions on things. But, but Mike Vick with. Uh, you know, have an animal's die at his hands. Dude, yeah. I think it's hard to be. I think it's hard to beat that. Yeah. When you can throw a football that far, it is easy to forgive a man. <laughs> Dude, when you have a wrist. comeback against the Giants like that, all was fucking forgiven that day, brother. <laughs> the miracle at the Meadowlands too. I think we all were like, "Hey, Mike's okay now." You know. <laughs> I, gotta you, I, I I gotta tell. You, I think I stopped watching the Eagles by then, though. Oh really, Dude, yeah. you, met, you missed one I, hell of a game, brother. I used to be a diehard Eagles fan. Yeah. Like if they lost, I was pissed off to the next week. Yeah. And then I'm probably going to take some heat for what I'm about to say. But what it was, was Donovan McNabb and Andy Reid. Mm-hmm. They, like nuts. Donovan McNabb throwing a hundred mile an hour screen pass. And some so in, in the fucking dirt. Oh my God. Dirt. How many, how many and times then, did we see that? Oh, and, and then, Westbrook's wide open. Just like, God, come on. Yeah. And then Andy Reid got out coached, you know, yeah. at least as an Eagles coach. Later in his career, for sure. Every major game he ever – and I, I I didn't watch five minutes, turned into a half, turned in. I hadn't watched an Eagles game in 15 years probably, 10, yeah. 10 years at least. Yeah. we, Me and Tom had season tickets for, what, 12 years, Tom, something like that, 10 wow. years. Wow. And, yeah, we had season tickets for a while. And, I mean, dude, you know, I got kids now and they're young. I yeah. just fucking – I don't have time for it anymore. I think that's what happens It's just – you're, it does. It's not a priority anymore. You got yeah. more important shit to do than yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, if they win, great. You know what I mean. I, yeah, hey, of that's awesome. Support. You know what but, I mean? but I'm not like it I'm doesn't upset me when they lose. I don't. You know, I'm not breaking stuff anymore. Before, yeah, yeah. before it legit would make or break your week if they won or lost. I was never a Wentz fan though. Even no, I didn't no. watch. I, I not. Nah, you know. Yeah. Well. You know. All right. Um. Before we wrap up the segment, do you have any questions for me? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That wraps up Justin's set question. We still haven't figured out the music for that yet. Yeah. But yeah. Play the the music Dub, your heart. Yeah. The Jalen Dub, Justin, J- Justin's question segment. That was another great one. Thank you, Justin. That was incredible. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank so, you. all right. So let's keep it moving. So let's get into it. So, okay. Let's talk about this. Right. So where we left off was, Dude, you found something you're passionate. This is what I fucking love, right? Like you're you're a fucking Italian guy from South Philly, one of 12 kids, right? You were selling pretzels at the vet, 
right? Matt, I, I got to correct you. What? I'm, Amer- I'm American. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm, fucking a, I'm fucking American, brother. Yeah. Amen, Red, brother. And blue. <laughs> hey, land of the I free, home that. of the brave. I love that. Damn right. Uh-huh. So you're just you were going to go to Italy and they ask you what you are. You can't say, oh, I'm Italian. I'm, a, nah, like, no, I'm American, man. Yeah. I used true. to say I used to say I was Italy. I don't know where the transition happened, but man, red, white, and blue, baby. Hey, amen. Best country in the world, yeah. brother. You ain't these co- you these ain't colors kidding. don't run. <laughs> yeah, damn right. <laughs> so okay, so it, you're a young American kid growing up in South Philly, cool, selling dude. pretzels at the vet, right? And then yeah, you would find something you're passionate about. Like you were kind of just moseying along. You had a kid when you were 20, right? right. And you yep. knew like, come on, I got it. Like that was also motivation too. But you found something that you're passionate about. And once you found that, it was like, you know, you had to get your fix, right? Like was you had, had to keep learning, had to keep getting knowledge on this and like just grow and grow and grow. So you did everything. What was the process of like, so you said you did chemistry and all that, but you had to go to schooling forever after that, it seemed, because yeah. you had to go to surgery surgery school or whatever the hell it is, right? You had surgery to, yeah. school. They <laughs> you had to go it? to surgery <laughs> you. Yeah, I, went, I did. I went to surgery school. Surgeon. <laughs> No, so it was, it's, yeah, it was a lot of, Matt, it was a lot of, uh, once I realized what I wanted to do, the blinders came on. I was like yeah. a horse with blinders. Yeah. And I, and I, and I, I got to tell you, I enjoy talking to, um, to young kids coming out now. And I, cause I feel like, you know, being on, being that guy that was a fuck up to being a guy that was, that made it. And I tell yeah. them, look, man, you got to sacrifice. And 1997, okay. 1997, that calendar year, I was getting ready to, to take my MCAT. It's the medical college admission test. Yeah. That whole calendar year, I went out five times and twice was involved with my buddy's wedding, the bachelor party yeah. and, and the actual wedding. Yeah. If, other than that, I would have went out three times the whole year. Yeah. And I'll tell these kids, I'm like, look, you got to sacrifice. Yeah. While you're out fucking around, someone, home, someone else is home working. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I use that. I said, look, I went out three times that calendar year. Those are the guys that make it. You know, mm-hmm. those are the guys that are going to get there. I, I graduated from Jefferson Medical School. Yeah. And look, you, can, you go to, you're in medical school. Obviously, you're with a bunch of smart kids. I, my, yeah. my class starts at 220 kids, right? Damn. And out of those 220 kids, I think about 10 were uniquely smart, where you're like, wow, man, th- these guys are smart. Yeah. You know, the rest of us were just like, you ain't going to outwork me. Really? We're, oh, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to outwork you. Yeah. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get a better grade than you. Yeah. Now, obviously you need a certain amount of intelligence but man they're just grinders and this is this is what this is the message that i try and, and, and give to people and, and, and youngsters coming out like yo listen man pay now or pay later yeah and whenever you choose to pay later you pay more yeah that's you gotta, damn sure you gotta, you gotta pay now yeah and so. and when you're young a year feels like forever but now it's in 37 like a year feels like four weeks yeah, like a year goes by I, like this. Now. Yeah, Shit, I just I, turned I, thirty-seven. But you know what I mean? Birthday. You, uh, I turned fifty this year. You're still a young man. I, I wouldn't, like, you know. I'll tell you, <laughs> man. Joe, yeah, you're looking pretty damn good for fifty, brother. Your Thanks. wife's I, pretty I, I lucky. Pal. Work out. Yeah. Hey, you, you, you do it, brother. Time it feels, down. yeah, it feels so much longer when you're when you're twenty to twenty-one feels like ten years compared oh, to what it does now. It's an eternity, and you can sacrifice a year. Yeah, they, that year is worth so much more when you're 20 to 21 than it is when you're 41. Dude, the yeah. amount of money I wasted partying in my 20s is fuck criminal. It's Matt, it's so funny that you criminal. say that. It's so funny. I, I tell these young kids, I'm like, listen, forget about the years when you're 20 to 30. I said, everybody gets wrapped up thinking, hey, these are supposed to be the best years of your life. The fact of the matter is, if you sacrifice those years, this is exactly what I tell you. I said, save your money. Yeah. Start buying real estate. Like I got yeah. an uncle that came here. You know, my mom came from Italy. She was 17. Her younger brother came. He was six years old. He got a high school diploma. He didn't go to college. He worked for GE on, you know, an assembly line for years. Started buying real estate. Look, I mean, the guy's a multimillionaire. Yeah. He owns three beach homes. But this <sighs> was like from investing in, listen, investing in real estate. I tell these young guys, yeah. I'm like, listen, you're in your 20s. Start buying real estate. If you yeah. sacrifice those years from when you're 20 to 30, the rest of your life is downhill. Uh, the rest of your life is a party. Yeah. Look, I, yeah. I, I, I tell them, you know, you could do it. I, I say, look, I'm 50. I'm not an old man. Look at me, man. I can still party if I wanted yeah. to. Yeah. They get wrapped up thinking in that. Every, 
The problem with our culture is everybody wants immediate gratification. Yeah. And they don't know how to say, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice today so I can have a better tomorrow. Yeah. My dad it's used to have a saying, my dad is saying, and I try to think about it a lot. He used to say, everybody wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to go through hell to get there. To right. Get there. Yeah, that, dude. It's the fucking truth. Everyone wants to get there, but it takes, it's so much work. And dedication and commitment and like like what they taught like Jordan Peterson when he talks about like you have to be obsessed, right? Like you you were absolutely to obsessed. A hundred percent control that obsession and work towards a goal, and that's how you get to where you are, and that's how you succeed and become top of your field and and you know be yeah. the best. Like it takes an obsession, a healthy obsession is nothing there's nothing wrong with a healthy obsession, nothing. right? And it just it it just motivates you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Like, I just I think I fuck, I love that. So can you kind of give us like what kind of uh, education and schooling did you have to go to to get to where you are now? Because it was quite a bit. Right. Like yeah. you had you spent a lot of time sitting the books. Am I right? I did. So, you know, we I ended up, like I said, with a chemistry degree and then and then I did a master's in biochemistry that took two years. And then I and then I went to medical school, which was obviously four years. Yeah. And then I actually did nine years of surgical training after medical school. Golly. So, yeah. So that was I did five years of general surgery at um, a temple hospital. OK. And um, after I um, I had only applied to it's crazy, man. I only applied to one med school. Thankfully, I got in. That was probably a stupid move. But the reason I did was like all, all the med schools in Philadelphia, are honestly, are in bad neighborhoods except for Jefferson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For and, sure. and I have I had my daughter, you know, I was getting my daughter every weekend since she was a baby. Yeah. So I was like, shit, I, I got a young daughter. I don't want to be a temple in, you know, in North yeah. Philadelphia or Penn yeah. and, and West Philly. So I was like, I applied to one med school. Thankfully, I got in. And then um, from there, I went up to temple hospital i did five years of general surgery and um so like part of I the still, training is is being in the hospital doing it right a hundred percent you're in the hospital look so uh, i i i did my 80 hour work week we were there you weren't allowed to be there for more than 80 hours so i did my 80 hours and then i went home what yeah so you so you 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 live there basically you live there and that's why they call it a residency <laughs> because no, seriously, you're a resident at the hospital. Sure. And and then and then and then after I did my five years up there and I met my lovely wife up there when I was an intern, I was six months out of med school. Uh, I used to work Thanks, at uh, Temple and Penn doing like DME yeah. equipment stuff, and I would see those residency rooms, the bunk beds, oh, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the little table with cards on it and yeah. like like be, stacked up ramens and stuff. Be, be honest, yeah. Joe. Be honest. All right. Now we've seen a bunch of these shows, the scrubs and all of that, right? Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> you know, yeah, right? Oh, you, yeah. you're a young, good looking American right <laughs> you're hanging out in these residencies huh mm. there's some good looking other residents maybe a nurse maybe a mm. pa whatever right how but many it, residents were residing in your uh... <laughs> yeah how many hung out in joe's bungalow huh <laughs> no 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 so listen so so i, I met i met my how many got there. joe's pretzel huh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, why, got put I, in the pretzel no, so pretzel I, I, joe I, I, I met my wife. I was six months out of medical school and she was six months out of nursing school. No shit. Yeah. So we, we love was found at Temple Hospital. In Dude, North she Philadelphia. clocked you. She clocked your ass right away. and was like, look, he's nah, gay. She, yeah, she yeah. was a hot, you know, I clocked her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you and saw that right away. Yeah. It's funny, right? So I always thought I would end up with an, you know, Italian chick, dark hair and all that. My yeah. wife, blonde hair, blue eye from Poland. She came here. She was fourteen. Yeah, so it's it's funny. My son's got light hair and blue eyes. Yeah, but um, yeah. So I, I met my wife, and uh, yeah, honestly, man, I, I knew she was the one. She was a great yeah. girl, great yeah. wife, dude. You and, know, uh, when you know, you know, right? And uh, yeah, yeah I, I, you know, I'll be honest, man. I, I wouldn't be where I am right now without her. God bless her, dude. Shout so out, she, great uh, woman. Yeah, she she supported me. She traveled my ass around the country, you know, and literally financially because. Look, when I was a resident, yeah, in my first year of residency, man, I was making thirty-one thousand dollars a year, and you're working you know? eighty-hour weeks. Oh man, it's like oh, God it's horrible, dang. Dude. You know, yeah, it's crazy, man. 
And you and, got uh, loans out the wazoo, right? Yeah, yeah, loans are crazy. And uh, so we were living in, uh, you know, I'm living in South Philadelphia at the time and commuting there. And then my wife moved in with me a couple of years afterwards. To, uh, and uh, we got married in 2008, okay. right the year I graduated from uh, Temple Residency. Okay. And then from there, I went down, I got accepted into a plastic surgery program at the Cleveland Clinic, Florida. So we moved to Florida. Ooh, and I plastic surgeon there. in Florida. You, yeah, you, had, nice. you were, yeah, you're like a, it's like a funeral home down there. You're never out of yeah. work. <laughs> plastic nah, surgery but we had, no, you know what? We lived in Fort Lauderdale. Which I'll be okay. honest, like I think, I think Miami. yeah, it's right above Miami. It's like you know, it, it was a happening place, man. It was yeah. a great place. Yeah, and, uh, great we weather. Love, yeah, it's yeah. gotta be awesome. And, and it worked out. You know, I mentioned I was getting my daughter every weekend. So mm-hmm. by that time, my daughter was a teenager. So she wanted I, to be I, with you, right? Uh, nah, quite oh. the opposite. Oh, she wanted she... to be with her friends. Oh, I only applied right. though, to one med school I mentioned earlier, and then I only applied to a couple surgery programs in the city. Like I had to be there. Yeah. But by the time of I finished Temple in 2008, the surgery program, my daughter yeah. was born in 92. Okay. By that time, she's a teenager. She doesn't want to come over every weekend anymore. No. Yeah. And I didn't stress her. I was like, you know what? She's becoming, she needs to have her friend's life. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So plastic surgery is very competitive to get into. I had to apply all over the country. Did and, that attract uh, you though? Like the competitive competitiveness of the field like that, you know, like you saw that and you're like, I can, I can like mentally, you're like, I can succeed. I know I can outwork him or whatever. Nah, you know what it is, uh, Matt? I like the scope of the, uh, you know, I was interested in uh, sewing blood vessels together. Yeah, yeah. So there's a field of microsurgery that you go through through plastics. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, I'm going to do advanced reconstructive stuff. Yeah. And uh, so I went down Cleveland Clinic, Florida, spent two years in there. Okay. Knowing that I was going to do this advanced reconstructive microsurgery. Yeah. Which you got to be a plastic surgeon first to do that. And then from there, I moved out to Los Angeles. I spent a year of, uh, of uh, specialty training at UCLA. Yeah. And uh, a lot of that was focused on uh, breast reconstruction for women with breast cancer. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah. And then I'm like head and neck cancers, but the overwhelming majority was breast cancer reconstruction. So instead of a woman getting an implant, mm-hmm. they would get a tummy tuck. We would take their belly tissue. Mm-hmm. And instead of disposing of that tissue, like you would for a tummy tuck, mm-hmm. we would bring it up to the chest and make a, a breast out of it. Yeah. So it's, it's their own tissue and the long, in the long run, it's better than an implant. Yeah. But when you move that tissue, you have to reestablish the blood supply or the tissue dies. And uh, so this is where a microsurgery comes in. We would take out a piece of the third rib. We'd find their internal mammary vessels, which the heart surgeons use for, for heart bypasses. And we would sew these blood vessels together under a microscope. or Wow. Or roots. So, and, Dude, uh, so you know, you're, you're like... If how you're, still do you have to be? Yeah, to I, that? exactly. That's what was, exactly yeah. what I was gonna say. Like your hands, how like do you can't you can't move at all, right? Like so what's you'd going? Be, you'd be surprised. Hands are a little overrated. Okay, the best surgeons I've seen are not the guys with the best hands. They're the guys with the best minds. And and there's a saying in surgery: the 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 eyes won't see what the mind doesn't know. The, the absolute best surgeons I know are the guys who were the absolute aces with anatomy and surgical technique. I won't say names, but I could give an example. When I was in training, there was two surgeons. One operated with a bit of a tremor and his partner did it. One guy, the guy with the tremor would run two rooms on a Monday and knock out about seven surgeries where his partner couldn't do seven surgeries in a week. The other guy had had the rock solid hands. And uh, the guy operated with the tremor, but never had to stop and think. He knew these operations cold. Yeah. He knew the anatomy cold. There was never a thought of, should I be here? Should I be there? Mm-hmm. He knew where he had to be. Every step of that operation, despite his little tremor, but he yeah. motored through it. Damn. So you need you need a certain amount of hands. Yeah. But it's mostly in the mind. So it's to, a total to like it's like a game plan. Like it's like a puzzle artist game plan. Everything when you're doing like you know when you're doing this, like you gotta go here, then you gotta take this here, but then you gotta take this from here to attach it to here. Like it's almost like you're putting a car together, but everything's alive, and then you gotta shape it so it looks nice at the end, right? Like that's insane. Also, you're, 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 you like, you're doing surgery through a microscope. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It's funny. It almost looks like when you're operating through an operating microscope. So when I was in Florida, we didn't use the microscope. We just used loops. They're just little magnifying glasses that come through your glasses and they're, they're good. And then 
when I went to you, you know, most guys will use like a 3.5 power loop. When I went to UCLA, I'm like, ah, I don't want to use the damn microscope. You know, it takes longer to pull it out. But I got to tell you, I became an advocate of microscope because the microscope's up to 10, 10 times magnification. Uh, you just see bigger and you see brighter. Yeah. So the vessel, you know, you're selling, you could be selling a one millimeter vessel or you're all magged That's up. You know, it, looks like a, it looks like a garden. <laughs> Like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but even so, if it's one millimeter, every, like the slightest movement that like yeah. could go all the way puncture and what so like you no, your movements sweet. are just they're just so minute, right? Like it's they, it's, they really are, they are. So wow. when you're so when you're selling ever have anything going wrong, go wrong. Oh, yeah, shit, sure, yeah, come absolutely. on, you can't talk about yeah. it. No, you can't. Uh, no, well, well, yeah, so I don't want, imagine I, I don't want you to get in trouble for malpractice. No, it's not that look. You know, they know that there's you, risk when, you, when they get these surgeries. 100%. All right. All right. You have to have. And it's about recovering with that too, right? Yeah. Like you got to be got to be able to handle that kind of stuff. We're, look, every surgeon. So the most immediate threat when you're operating is, is you get into bleeding, right? Because that's, that's like, God, I never had a patient die on the table. But God if you have a patient you. die, yeah. If you have a patient die on the table at your hands, it's going to be as a result of bleeding that you couldn't control. Otherwise, it's an anesthetic complication. So look, you, you got to be able to, to deal. Not like I've had, when I was in my general surgery training, I've had gunshots die on the table. You know, you got a yeah. guy shot up yeah. five, six times. You try and yeah. save him. But these, so the thing with microsurgery is uh, a lot of surgeons get uncomfortable operating when they get near blood vessels or nerves. Mm -hmm. This is where you can hurt somebody. You, yeah. you cut a nerve, you're going to paralyze. That's crunch time. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. Like, that's yeah. When yeah. It's or you get into a blood. Yeah. The beauty of microsurgery is that's all we did was operating on, on that. It's all we did that whole year at UCLA, the whole year I operated on blood vessels and nerves. Wow. So it, make, it makes you very uncomfortable being a, being a, like it's tiger country. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Uh, we're, we're yeah, so you you get comfortable with that kind of stuff. That year at UCLA was the single best year of surgical training that I had. Yeah. And that's not to diminish any that was like that was finishing school. Like I said, yeah. surgeons get comfortable being what on year of the nine was that? Like you, you did nine years of surgical training. What year was that like eight and that, seven, eight, that nine? Was, that, that was year eight. Okay. So that, you're that coming, like your you're kind of get like you've been at it for a while. You're honing your craft and you're kind of going like you went, you're just like going from triple A to the pros now. Yeah. Right. Like you know, they, that's that's the year they bronzed my balls. You got bronze <laughs> balls. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, seriously you get a little it's funny right and then and then my first job my first job out of uh out of training i think the first job is critical too because you develop all this courage in your yeah. in what we call like that year was my fellowship year at ucla yeah. you've already done the training and now it's a fellowship where you're, where it's advanced it's advanced training and then in your first job you're either going to take on a hard job where you're going to continue to build your courage or you're going to go somewhere where your skills yeah. atrophy and you yeah. don't do those hard cases. I was fortunate enough to, I went to a, a place in Camden, New Jersey called Cooper University Hospital. Uh -huh. And they were, they were trying to recruit a surgeon to do these microvascular breast reconstructions because they had to send all the patients across, just across the river to Penn. And they wanted someone to come in and do that. And, and, I, and I was the guy. I got recruited. I came in and I started that program over there. Yeah. And I did a bunch of these complex cases my first year out of training. And, and I got to tell you, man, it just battle hardened me, man. It was just, you know, I ended up leaving Cooper because, look, the money sucked. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah. But, but that experience that I took with me, spending three years there, yeah. was worth its weight in gold. You couldn't put a price tag on it. No. It allowed me to do the things that I did when I left Cooper that I went into community hospitals and I say, hey, look, I'm here in a community hospital. I'm going to start a microvascular program for it. And, and I did that. I went to several you know, small community hospitals where they've never seen these operations and had the confidence to say, hey, I'm going to get these patients safely through this operation and we're going to have great outcomes here and we're going to build you. We're going to build you an otherwise world-class cancer center where you're going to major academic universities to get these cancer reconstructions where you, you don't have to travel anymore. You yeah. can get it right here in, in, yeah. in these small community hospitals. And that never would have happened without my year at UCLA and my three years at, at, at Cooper. Golly. So I did year nine when I left Cooper. 
Okay. I had a restrictive covenant and uh, meaning I couldn't practice in the area after I uh, left there for one year. No compete like, what the hell? Yeah, no compete yeah. clause. I'm like, yeah. what the hell am I going to do for a year? So I went up to Manhattan to uh, get some more finishing school. And when you're when you're a plastic surgery resident in training, you don't really get to do many facelifts or noses. You'll get to watch, but it's not hands on. Look, this is a high stakes operation where people are paying a lot of money, so you don't really get to do. It. So I didn't have a comfort level, and I knew that. And I don't like bullshitting people, you yeah. know when. When someone comes into my office, I want them to know, hey, look, you're you're putting your trust in me and I take that serious. Yeah. I'm going to keep you safe. So I went up to Manhattan and I learned how to do faces and noses from some of the best guys in the world. You know, I went up there with lacking confidence yeah. and, I, and I left there knowing, OK, I know this operation. I could do it in my sleep. Yeah. And I spent, you know, God, that year up in Manhattan, that's all I did was bouncing from office to office with really the best facelift in those guys. You know, honestly, How did world, you get in with in the them? World. Did you just call and you're like, hey, I got a year. I got a no complete cause, non-compete clause for a year. I just want to get some looks at some some stuff and learn and, and grow at this aspect. And they just said, yeah, come on up kind of thing. Is that how it goes? Kind of. I went up for the interview. And, and, you know, look, by that time I'm interviewing, I'm a, I'm, I'm a polished guy. I'd already yeah. been yeah. I'm already a board You're certified. You're nine years in the game. game. Yeah, You're yeah. I'm already, I'm yeah, You're a made man. Yeah, I'm a made man. And yeah. practice. So, Joey I, Pretzels I, is a made yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> no, look, I'm talking differently than I'm yeah. talking differently than someone that's coming right out of a plastic surgery training program that yeah. never did an operation on their own. Yeah. So they 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 liked me, and I was fortunate enough that they look they had faith in me. They gave me an yeah. opportunity, yeah, and I and I made the most of it. And this is a common thing too. Like you're not the first guy with a non complete compete clause in the game, yeah. right? Like yeah, they know like hey, this guy's got a year off. He wants to learn this and do this. So they're you're going up there. You're seeing them do these surgeries, and like there's certain moves or certain like I guess like parts of the surgery that it's like you saw them perform that and you're like, Oh, that was an incredible tuck or that was an incredible finish or whatever the hell it is. And you're just adding that to your repertoire and just growing like the skills you have. So literally it's, it's like, I want to, it seems like, and I'm not trying to be a jerk, but there's a lot of comparisons to what you're doing almost to the automotive industry. So we have a guy on the show who owns an auto garage, right? Every, every listener knows who the fuck I'm talking. And he's a guy on the show. And he talks about one of the biggest things they do for like advertising, everything like that is word of mouth. So it's kind of the same thing you're saying, right? Where it's like, yeah, there's, there are some plastic surgeons. There is kind of, there has been a stigma of like, they'll scam you or they'll rob you or they'll sew sew you up with some shit. Right. Like, but you are fighting back against that being completely honest, like standing by your work, supporting your product. And, and like, then word of mouth travels, like, Oh, someone talk, say something about plastic surgery. Like not my guy, Joey Fretzels fucking kills it. Right. And like, so it builds it that way. And then also like, you know, you learned in the nine years before you're doing carburetors and oil changes and all that shit. But now you're going up top and you're working on Ferraris and Lamborghinis. And now you're like the high end guy. Is that kind of like by the end of this roller coaster, that's where you're headed, right? Well, look, yes, yes, definitely. You don't have to, dude, you don't have to be humble. You're fucking, you're no, the, no, you're the no, main so, event, brother. So no, Matt, but it's look, it's one thing. And I take this very serious. And this is what I'll tell patients in these exact yeah. words is, yeah, is, um, when someone comes in my office, look, nothing I'm doing is life-saving, right? And, and people are coming in and they're spending dollars, you know, on what's called a luxury item. Yeah. But nonetheless, Collective. I, I, I take it very serious when someone shows up in my office and spends their hard-earned money in my office, yeah. you know, and I, and I appreciate that. Look, yeah. at the end of the day, this is how my kids eat. Yeah. And I make sure, and I tell patients, I say, look, I can't tell you how many times I send people out of my office. I, I charge a hundred dollar consult fee. It's a nominal fee, but what it does is it, it, it gets the shoppers out of my office. Yeah. It keeps the riffraff. Yeah. 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 Serious. Keeps the bullshitters and, and out. I, I have a lady show up at my office a couple of weeks ago for liposuction. Yeah. I said, look, you're not a candidate. And anyone that tells she was way too overweight. I gave her her hundred hour feedback. I said, listen, you obviously were serious about surgery. You paid a hundred bucks to come here. But I, and that's why I said, look, I'm a plastic surgeon. This is how my kids eat. I'm telling you, you shouldn't have this surgery. It's not safe. You're not a candidate. I don't want to operate on. Yeah. 
and I, I could hurt you. My first responsibility is not to hurt you. Yeah. I said, I think you should look into weight loss surgery and then come back. Yeah. You know, and then we'll have a conversation because there are a lot of guys out there. They're just looking to get into people's pockets. And, mm -hmm. and the other thing I'll tell patients is um, at this stage of my career, I, I am past the point of cutting something wrong, sewing something wrong. Yeah. If I were to have a patient that's upset, it's because I failed to manage their expectations. Okay. I, so the, the, the most important thing what I'm doing is when I'm talking to people is that I, I need to manage their expectations. Hey, what is your goal? Yeah. You know, can my surgery deliver that goal? Yeah. If they're not synchronous, I won't operate. Right. Yeah. Like, can you make because me look like Brad Pitt? <laughs> be like, no, I can't you're do getting your, that. You're getting your hundred bucks back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to give you 150 <laughs> back. Yeah, That's say, how yeah, bad yeah. it is. Nah, yeah. It's a little no, extra. But like, yeah. But I, you know, so I, I believe in like in honesty and this, and I'll tell people like, I'm not a charlatan. You yeah. know, and, and I'm not looking to like, I, I started doing, I'm going to use thread lifts as an example. And so it's a non-surgical face lift, non-surgical face lift. I think these are a lot of bullshit. You know, I've done a little bit and, and, and I'm not convinced on them, especially on the neck. Someone comes in with an aging neck. It doesn't work well there. Yeah. And, and I, and I stopped doing it. I looked at, it, I'm like, Hey Joe, you know, should you be doing this? There's people making money. I never believed in it as a surgeon from an anatomic standpoint. Yeah. I had the rep come out, you know, he spotted me some threads. We did a few of them and I, and I realized this doesn't work well in the neck. Yeah. It's just anatomically it's flawed. Yeah. And uh, I can't sell this to people. Yeah. When someone comes in and they're going to spend their hard earned money with me yeah. and they don't get the result that they want, especially, yeah. like I said, especially that it could work well in the cheek. Sure. And if for an isolated case, if it's a woman who wants a little bit of a cheek lift, she's not quite ready for a facelift. It could work for there. But you got these other people out there that are non-surgeons. And, and not that I'm not knocking them, but it's like, this is how they make their money. And um, I'm, you know, I don't yeah. want to knock people on no, the air. No, well, you're not going to sell something yeah. you don't believe in. Exactly. You know, exactly. Yes, exactly. I, I, I got a question for you. I, I got two questions, I guess, uh -huh. really. Um, One, so a lot of the, you're doing these surgeries and you're putting people are going under and, you know, their, their life is in your hands, basically, right? Pretty... Yep pretty intense thing do you have like a routine that you that you do every oh, great question pre-surgery or whatever that you you get into your your ultimate focus that you need to have yeah. for this or that like you have like something that you do that keeps you in the zone basically that's a great it is a great question so uh all right, my wife i'm gonna bring my wife up here Oh, dude, it, I, I got to say, so I don't have a routine, right? And, and I don't know how to explain it, except that when I'm, when I'm driving into the operate in the morning, it's weird, man. I, I relax. I relax into a zone. Yeah, I'm definitely getting into a certain mindset. And it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of it's subliminal, if you will. So my wife will call me up. Yeah. And so say, hey, Joe, this patient, that patient. Does she As work driving, at your office? Yeah, my wife runs my practice. So she does an oh, amazing yeah. job. Awesome. The, and, and, and there's a couple hard rules I have. And this kind of became one of them. Okay. And, I, and I'm like, I don't want to hear about this patient. I need to relax into this yes. surgery. Yes. And that's what I call it. I call it relaxing into a yeah. surgery. I just need yeah. to clear my mind, if you will. Mm -hmm. I, I Whoa. want my mind. I want my mind empty. If that mm -hmm. makes any sense. Yeah, because you're relying and, on uh, your instincts. We're great right? at that. We could help you and, with uh, that. No, <laughs> I, I, my <laughs> mind is blank. We are right the now, kings of <laughs> empty mind. It's, it's, it's funny. So I said to her, "I'm like, yeah, you can't call me with this shit unless someone's like, it's an emergency, and the only emergency is you're calling me to tell me somebody's bleeding. I don't want to hear about it. You mm -hmm. got to call me afterwards. And she's done this a couple times, and I, I got a little short last time, so then yeah. I felt a little bad. Yeah. I call my buddy in New Jersey, who's a plastic surgeon. I'm like, yo, man, look, my wife just called me. I was a little, you know, I was a little rough and I feel bad. I'm like, do you get like this? He's like, I absolutely, it's funny. His wife runs his practice. He's like, I told her the same thing. You can't call me yeah. about other patients when I'm getting ready to operate yeah. unless it's an absolute emergency. And the, the technique I'm, I'm big on is called mindfulness. Okay. I don't know if you guys ever heard of this. No, no. What is uh, Mindfulness is an amazing tool. So when I was a sophomore in, in med school, okay, right, we had to take a um, we had to take a uh, a seminar course. Uh -huh. So it's all the what's called a surgeon's the jocks of med school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So all the surgeons is fine. We all sign up. All right, let's take a bullshit seminar. We sign up. 
we sign up for this mindfulness and it's about meditation. Yeah. So we showed up, it's, it's the, the trauma wannabes, the ortho wannabes, all these guys that want to be brain surgeons, heart surgeons, trauma surgeons. Here we are together in this mindfulness course. Yo, this is, is there crazy, shit talk man. in there too? Or are you like, ah, you guys think you're the like best your scalpel work, work yeah, yeah, is yeah, for yeah. the birds it, joke? It, it, Come on, yeah, no, nah, but it's funny. We and I still remember it's this lady, her name is Diane Ribel. Okay, Diane Ribel's got a PhD in psychology. Listen, this was this mindfulness thing turned out to be so profound. Yeah, it was started out as a joke. We would, we would, uh, she taught you just how intrusive thoughts perhaps maybe come into your mind and just. Okay, I'm going to acknowledge this thought. I'm going to let it go. It, it's I'm, I'm way oversimplifying this. We were listening to these tapes. It was all about how to clear your mind. Uh, I've done that with meditation. I've done the with thing meditation. where you, that, you know, and you try to concentrate on your breathing or whatever Matt, that kind of Matt, I would go grabs home. you. I would go home after these seminars and study. And it was amazing. I would pound out hours worth of work. Yeah, with the most clarity of thought and focus. Wow. And I, I'm so I'm a big proponent of mindfulness. Anybody that deals with like anxiety, I'll tell them, look, you got to look into mindfulness. This mm -hmm. is this this is really going to help you, you ultra focused. Is what Shit. you're saying, Matt? What I would tell you, you need to look up Diane Ribel and have her on your show. Look, hey, done. I'll look her up. Hell yeah. She spelled it. I think it was R I E B E L. So Diane Ribel. This was such a profound uh, like encounter a, that I had. This this was your second year in med school. You said I was a sophomore in in, in uh, medical school. So you've been using this technique for for on and off. I graduated med school in two thousand and three. I started in nineteen ninety nine. So that's somewhere. I think that was second semester. It's probably around year two thousand and one. Yeah. And, I, and I'm still singing the praises of mindfulness. It, was, it made that much of an impact on me. She's the, she's still to, the to director be... of, of uh, mindfulness and clinical associate professor in the Department of Integrative Medicine at the Sydney Kimmel Medical College of Thomas Oh, Jefferson so she's, University. she's a Thomas Jefferson now. Yeah. Listen, profound. This woman was amazing. Wow. Damn. Yeah. So, so I, wait, so I want to check out. I want it. She has a book. I don't know. But she, I don't know. So you're so okay. So can you kind of like map it out for us? So how is this book? Like, do you have one day a week that you do surgery? Or it's just like, hey, we got to do this today and this two days. And, you know, like, the, hey, we did part one of this today. And then part two of it's next week. Or what the hell the hell does it go? Wait, what do you mean with I'm like, how do you, how do you book the surgery? Right. Like, oh, how do I book surgeries? Oh, my, cos my cosmetic coordinator is amazing. So, yeah. you know, I'll see patients a couple days a week. I'll operate a couple days a week for the summer. Like we're in the summer season now. And uh, yeah. I'll be honest, I slow it down. I take off every summer. Yeah, I mean, dude, I, you deserve it, bro. Is every, there a busy place. season in, 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 uh, in, uh, Definitely. plastic surgery? The spring, the spring gets busy. The fall gets busy. Summer slows down. Yeah. So I want to be off every Friday and I'm trying to be off every Monday as well. And you're heading down to heading down to the beach, right? You're getting heading your, down to the get, beach, getting your, your sun time in. Hell yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll operate a couple of days a week, see patients a couple of days a week, you know, but like so one, set but it, like one, it that way is one day it's one or the other, like one day it's seeing patients day and one day it's operating day or what it's turned into lately is a lot of times I operate on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes I was operating on Fridays for a little while. I'm definitely eliminating that for the summer. Fuck yeah. It's you know, and uh, it kind of, it kind of shuffles. It does shuffle. Um, mm -hmm. Wednesdays could be an operative day, but I, I used to see patients every, every week on Thursdays and I would kind of pack them in. Yeah. But I kind of, I kind of split that up now. I've been operating yeah. more on Thursdays. Yeah. I, see there... patients, I saw patients all day today. How many I'm, oper I'm operating tomorrow. I'm operating Thursday. Yeah. How many surgeries can you fit in a day? Like, it depends. I know depending on the, like, but say, you know, say it's like all four media, like, 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 you know, like, are you looking like, if you know, like you got like, I guess like five basic procedures would, could you do five? Ba I mean, I don't know. Like, I know they all depend on time, but like, you're, you're not rushing these, right? It's like, you need to Look, be this. Th this is what I am. This is what I am. I'm a home run hitter. I don't yeah. go off a of time. I got to hit home runs. Fuck yeah. Is there a uh, is there a particular surgery like 
of all the ones that you're doing, is there one that's like more of a pain in the ass than the other ones? You're like, oh, not another one of these. These are the yeah. worst. Like yeah. they're just like, you know, is there one that that is more like that you're that you're sick of doing or you hate? You're just like, I, I does hate the doing mindfulness those clear those type of thoughts though? Yeah. Right? So so look, right? I'm at the point in my career now where I only do shit I like doing. If I don't like doing <laughs> it, I ain't doing it. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so like I've noticed, there's like, I'm not doing any more butt lifts. Right? Contractors, right? <laughs> no. They don't want to do a, a job or whatever, right? So they'll say, you know, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, but it's going to cost you this much money. You know what I mean? To actually, to yeah. actually yeah, do so it. So all the, you know, all the, I, I honestly, I enjoy doing all the cosmetic stuff. The stuff I, I don't like doing is like facial fractures. Uh And, and God, when I was a Cooper, man, we would, we, we split facial fracture call half the month. We were on hand trauma. And we split that with ortho and the other half of the month, we were on facial fracture trauma and we split that with what's called OMFS, or maxillofacial facial surgery. And that's so like be car on call. accidents and stuff? Yeah. Honestly, when I was in Canada, it was mostly sucker punches. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Not a lot of, with, with the airbags, the facial fractures are going down with car accidents. So dude, I'd, I'd be in there on a Sunday afternoon. So, and you'd have to like do it on a Sunday afternoon because you're busy all week. I, I'd be fixing three mandibles on a Sunday and orbital floor. It's like these bars let out of Camden and the whole damn city. Everybody was sucker punching each other. So I'd be yeah. fixing broken jaws. So I yeah. don't like doing facial fractures. Yeah. Uh, followed by that, I don't like doing head and neck cancer reconstructions. Yeah. And, and only because, look, at the end of the day, and I hate to, I hate to make it out to be about this, but like, like I'm a private practice guy, right? So yeah. it's, it's eat what I kill. I don't have a salary. Yeah. When you're doing a head and neck reconstruction, it's a Medicare rate. You could be in there for 12 hours. It just, it doesn't pay enough money to keep your lights on. Somebody with yeah. a, you know, a tongue cancer or Florida mouth cancer, they're getting their mandible taken off and you're taking their fibula bone and you're bringing it up to the jaw and making a new mandible out of it. These are 12 hour operations, 13 hour oh. operations. Medicare wants to give you, you know, pennies on the dollar. You can't keep your lights on doing that no. stuff. So no. they're, they're interesting operations. Uh, they're challenging operations, but at the end of the day, as a private practice that, guy, I, I can't do those. That, but that's like that's a flaw of the system, though, right? It is like, a flaw of the system. That's fucked up. That's like because like you like legit, you got if you're if you a private practice guy, you own like your own. You basically own your own business, and you're renting like you know like I guess you got you have, to, you have to have rent salaries. out the surgical center, or how does that work? So no, you know you'll go. There's three costs that go into a cost of a surgery. Like I'm, I'm just going to use a breast augmentation. Okay. There is a surgeon fee, a facility fee that they pay directly to the hospital and an anesthesia fee. Okay. Now, if you, if you bought your own OR, then yeah, you've invested at least a million dollars into that. Fuck. Build your own OR and, and you're going to be, you're going to be paying that off. You got yeah. a hefty, you got a hefty payment to make every oh, month. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So, okay. So you kind of like rent, like rent out an OR and, and like, you know, you rent an OR anesthesiologist and what was the third thing? Anesthesia fee, facility fee, surgeon fee. Okay. Three okay. Cost of surgery. okay. And you, do you kind of have your crew and your, and your place that you do it all? Like, yeah. Like this is like, this is your spot. This is your crew. And, and this is where you do yeah, it. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. 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 So before we were talking about this, Tom, you said you're a home run hitter. So what does that entail? Like, so you like you go in there like you you do the mindfulness you remove the thoughts you concentrate like do you concentrate on what you have to do and the surgery you have to perform and and everything that's going to go in it and what, oh 100 and so you're going in there and you're a home run hitter what's what do you mean by that well look you know so number one is you guys were asking me how many surgeries i could do in a day number one is i don't worry about being the fast guy yeah i worry about being the good guy I, I don't leave. I don't leave that room until I get it right. These people, yeah. I'm not the cheap guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. someone that comes to see me, they're coming for excellence. They're not coming for a bargain. Fuck yeah. You know, I travel. Look, I try. I I traveled this great country. I trained in in South Florida, Los Angeles, and New York. I got to train with some of the absolute best and brightest talents in plastic surgery. Yeah. So, and I, I didn't take any shortcuts. I know guys that didn't do that, and they said, and "quote I'm going to learn on people." <laughs> you know. Ooh, so I didn't do that. I, I, I learned from the best and, and yeah. that's what you're going to get. Yeah. And I don't, and I don't rush that. So, you know, you're I an artist, bro. You're a fucking artist and you're painting a canvas, <laughs> dude. Absolutely. It's funny. People come to see me 
Nah, and I tell them, look, I don't do surgery anymore. I build visions. <laughs> and I'll talk to I these girls. That. No, no, really. And I tell, and I say, look, you got the option. You know, the, the surgeon, the surgeon is going to give you a Mercedes Benz. It's a great car. I'm going to put you in a Rolls Royce. Fuck. Which one do you want to be? And I yeah. give them all their options. I say, you could do this, this, and this. If you add on this and this, and it's a very simple, it's a very simple vision. Yeah. And I, it's exactly what How I tell How much for a Volvo? <laughs> nah, what about yeah, a yeah. Pontiac Sunrise? <laughs> nah, we don't do Pontiacs anymore. <laughs> I'll tell them. I'll, Wait, what I'll was the car that you wanted back in the day that you had to get? Oh uh, shit! I wanted a Trans Am. Trans Am. Firebird. Yeah, but, but you've made it. Right. You've set it to your standard. This is all I'm doing. I'm yeah. not. There's no way I'm not hitting a home run. Yeah, and that's the. Got to be a home run because. Thing. Because look, that's what the patients deserve. And then I'm going to go back to what I said earlier, man. When someone comes to spend their heart, look, running a business now, yeah. I think one of the best things I did was open my own practice. Yeah. It allowed me to see the world differently. Yeah. Before you get a paycheck. Now that I understand what it's like to, I got to, I got to earn this money that's going to feed my kids. I got to sign Fuck paychecks. Yeah. Yeah. I got such an appreciation for anybody that takes their shot and owns and, 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 and opens a business, man. Just uh -huh. takes a lot of balls. Fuck yeah. You know, and, and uh, it's a hard thing to do. So when someone comes to spend their hard earned dollars from me, yeah. I'm not worried about time. I don't even look at the clock. Yeah. I, I, I'm there with you until I'm satisfied that it, when I'm leaving that operating room, I could look myself in the mirror and say, you know what, Joe, you did your best for this patient. Yeah. And it's yeah, irrelevant to time. Yeah. So. Honestly. And that's what we were talking about. Like word of mouth passes down. You know what I mean? Like if you see, you know, if you had sister Mary shovel face coming at you with no, you know, no sweater puppies and the next week she shows up and it's fucking Pam Anderson. Yeah. And like, Whoa, baby. You know, like, come on, you know, that's your, that's your advertisement right there. What do you, what would you say if you're allowed to answer this, what's the most requested surgery you see? God, most requested. I, I, you know, I got to say, I do a nice variety. Yeah. Uh, I think the mommy makeover has got to be near the top of that list, you know, or what's... breast lift, the tummy tuck. Uh, I do a lot of, um, there's a name for it. The mommy uh... makeover. Well, I mean, out on the streets, you hear a mommy that have had kids that, and That's they want, generally, yeah. yeah, yeah like she nursed yeah. a couple kids. They you know, sacrifice their body. Yeah. They want to get back to what they were. The belly's before, not what it used yeah. to be. The yeah. breasts aren't what they used to be. Yeah, they just be. divorced their uh, their ex husband, and now they're trying to rub it in his face. So that's now, guys. That, can we get a? Can we get that a usually clap comes afterwards. Too? Can we yeah. clap for Joe? He's fixing boobs everywhere. He's fixing fixing tits every day. He's doing the Lord's work. He's doing the Lord's work. That was great. Honestly. It's no joke. I sometimes I call it couples therapy. <laughs> it's it's amazing, man. Like seriously, it really is. It's it's funny. I'll tell these women, you know, they get their breasts fixed, they'll get their belly fixed, and they feel better about themselves. They feel oh, yeah. sexy again, you know. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. And next thing you know, like I, I got to be honest, marriages are doing better. The sex mm -hmm. lives are improving. Yeah. It's 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 uh it's for real, man. It's no, really for real. Nice. No, I could see that, dude. hundred percent, man. Yeah, because you know. The, like women and I, th I think yeah definitely women i would say and, and maybe this isn't always the case but th as far as body issues go they're in their fucking Look good feel good play good well, that's yeah. society too you know totally. they're putting yeah. these things on where they feel like you know it's a lot it's a combination of things well look yeah. you know it's funny society it's crazy i'm seeing i gotta be honest with you i'm doing surgeries on younger and younger patients and uh that was something i had to think about and it, yeah. it, you know, What's I found the age life... limit that you say this is acceptable to. Yeah, right? well, it has to be yeah. 18, 18 as they have. No, nah, not. I just it's it's, it's oh, funny, really? you know, I've done liposuction now and this is going to sound controversial. What I'm about to say there might be some viewers that that are going to that are going to say, hey, man, this guy's crazy. But I've done liposuction now on a couple females, 16 years old. Yeah. And and and, and at first when the, the one girl I grew up with her mother. The first okay. time I did liposuction at 15 was she was 16. Um, her mother calls me I, and I I'd done surgery on her mom. And uh, I got to tell you, if I could show you the text of what it did for this for this girl, it's amazing how it changed her life. Dude, this, I, this is a yeah. girl that wouldn't put a bikini on, didn't want to go to her prom. Now, wow. all of a sudden, it, it's amazing. Social media, for all the good it's done, yeah. is doing a lot of bad for society. These kids are under so much pressure to look a certain way. Yeah, you know, and uh, and it's unfortunate, but so I've done I've done surgery on 
like noses were always common to do on teenagers, but now the body contouring. And at first I had to ask myself, Joe, what the hell are you doing? And, you know, but after, after doing it, you know, several times now, it's remarkable that these, these girls are, are becoming much more self-confident. And I yeah. got to tell you, living healthy lives yeah. from a psychological standpoint. Yeah. No, I could, dude, a hundred percent see that, especially like, like you're saying, like back when we were going to school, this is the thing, like maybe someone said something, you got bullied, whatever. It kind of was at school. You went home is a different thing. Now it's 24 seven around the clock. They got your socials. They're just busting you all the time. People saying all this shit being mean. Yeah. Right. So like this girl goes from being like, just wearing a hoodie all the time. So self-conscious. Can't escape yeah. Can't look herself in the mirror to this totally changed her comments and really changed the direction of her life. Right? 100%. Plus, too, 100%. like suicide rate has gone way up. You know, like you say you're not saving lives on the table, Joe, but you, you're not giving yourself enough credit. There's people that come in that have survived a cancer or, you know, are, are, you know, in high risk of maybe suicide because of depression and things like that. And you do something that alters their life and alters their trajectory, man. And you should be very proud of that. And you shouldn't sell yourself. Matt, super, it's, dude. Matt it's, so, it's so funny that you say that. And I'm only going to bring this up because you brought it up. So the last 16 year old girl I operated on had two suicide attempts. Okay. Wow. She was being solid. Matt, she was being cyber bullied and body shamed. Yeah. And I, and I can Okay. And I yeah. canceled, I canceled the surgery the first time. I'm like, no way I'm not doing it. And then we tried, she came up on the second surgery date. And I said to the mom, I said, I need a letter from your psychiatrist. The mom goes to the psychiatrist was in India and they couldn't get a letter clearing her. And wow. then, you know what I said to myself, it allowed me, and I was going to cancel the surgery. And then I said to myself, I'm like, look, this girl had two attempts on her life already yeah. because she's being body shamed so bad. God. That they had to take her and move her to multiple schools. She's a sophomore in high school. And she's been okay? through, like, this is, been through this, this is, like, this Matt. is torture on another level. So then yeah. I said to myself, I said, you know what? And I talked to the mom. The mom was real. She's like, please operate on her, please. Yeah. And I said, I want this letter. We couldn't get the letter. And I thought about, I'm like, I'm like, does this letter from a psychiatrist even matter? Yeah. Yeah. I said, this girl already tried to kill herself twice. Yeah. I yeah. said, what's this guy might tell me? No. I said, I, and I, and I sat back and reflected. I said, I think I might help this girl. Yeah. I got to I got to tell you the, the turnaround that this girl had. All right. So she was huge in the wood huge in the midsection with a flat butt. Yeah. So I, we did some, I did a lot of liposuction. I took, I did a seven liter liposuction. Is it, I took that's, seven liters. Oh, seven liters. I thought you said seven, seven layers, seven liters, Dang. seven liters, seven liter liposuction. And I did a lot of fat graft into, to, you know, to the buttocks. She looks like a different human being. This girl, you know, feels you so much better about herself. Down. Yeah. It's funny. Guys are, guys are telling her, Oh my God, look, it, it's a different, it's a different girl. But, plus two, Trans like, yeah. And you're not, you're not like, you're not injecting her with plastic. You're, re no. you're just moving around the shit she already had. If she comes right? in now, she comes in now. She smiles. Her hair is done. Uh, she's got makeup. Yeah. See, uh, Matt, honestly, save this girl's life. Dude, this girl's I, life. I, a hundred percent. I, I a hundred percent agree with that. I couldn't yeah. agree more. Dude. Imagine if you said no. Imagine if you fucking said no. She'd probably be on her third attempt to take right. her own life. She was right. already at the end of her attempt. rope. She was yeah. already she was there, the man. Attempt. Already <laughs> yeah. there. Imagine if you would have said no. God dang, yeah. dude. Man, hey, that's Joe. incredible. So pe people think that I'm crazy saying that. And I don't want to disclose the story. And obviously, I'm not saying a patient's name, but it happens. What about uh, do you uh, do you do any surgeries to enhance the uh, male anatomy? Oh, shit. Yeah, it's, I had a lot. I've had requests. You know, we talked about that free fibula bone that I use for mandibles. I had a couple guys ask me if they could bolt in a free fibula. You know, to... <laughs> wow. It's usually my high school buddies breaking my yeah, balls. Yeah, 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 can, yeah. can you take my femur? Can you use my femur? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, huh? we can use the femur. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Dude, that's, I mean, I'll tell you, dude, people, like, Pete, I'll say this. Plastic surgery, like, I feel like what you're doing, though, it shouldn't be under the term plastic surgery, right? Like you're, you know, like it's you're doing reconstruction, right? And like you're saying, you're doing like a vision. You know what I mean? Sure. You're giving them a vision of what they dreamed their body could be. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you're you're doing this for people and you're providing this service and like plastic surgery 
does have that rap on it where it's like because of guys that you know didn't do the work and, and took the the low road and, and did some botches and didn't come out sure. looking good like there Plus, is i think stigma. how it looked in the 90s too. oh it's not yeah. looking like no, it is now. and it's it important more for me. plastic it seemed no nah, yeah. look and it's funny i'll tell these women you know the most important thing for me is when a patient has surgery that nobody ever looks at them and says hey you look done i'll use breast i'll use breast implants as an example if I get a small girl coming to my office asking me for 600 CC implants, she's getting her hundred dollars back and she's getting sent out. It's not what I do. Natural. It's yeah. got to look natural. Like, right. I'm telling crazy. Like, husbands are worried about it. And I say, listen, the, the look I'm going for is that when you take your wife yeah. to a nice vacation, she's in a bikini. No one's ever looking like, Hey, who's the bimbo with the big breast? Yeah. It's just like, wow, this woman looks great. Yeah. She, yeah. Nobody's ever going to know. Just, she's yeah. I want to, and I'll tell these girls, you know, I want you to go to go shopping. You take a dress off the rack, you put it on. It looks great. You take the next track, next dress off the rack, you put it on and it looks yeah. great. Yeah. You look in the mirror, you're like, wow, I like yeah. the way I look. Yeah. We're not going for that plastic look. I think that's a failure to be yeah. honest with you. I'd agree. I'd agree. I think the world sees that too. Like that fad's over the big, yeah. the big fake junk, ju- you know, jugs like, yeah. <clears throat> and like fake ass, Love like that fad. Love Especially that. with the uh, elderly, <laughs> elderly, but like you know, women, you, when you can tell that they've had a facelift, yeah. it's you. You would it's have been better look. off doing nothing at all, you know, <laughs> yeah. just bad aging bad 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 versus that weird. Like especially when they're like, you know, the lips and face don't move, uh, and you're like, uh, it looks weird when you talk now. Plus it looks crazy like, when you talk. You know, like, yeah, how would no, you, even, you know, yeah, I'm with you. I had women come in that have already had their lips injected elsewhere. They want more. Oof. I'll send them out. I said, yeah. listen, I can't have my name attached to that. Yeah, <laughs> I can't co that. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Too, like, does it become like for some people, it becomes an addiction almost, right? Like they need more of this or they want this yeah. more or they want they're more of that, satisfied. right? Like, yeah, they're, they're like body, their body image issues are so, you know, skewed that they're totally. just keep wanting more. Golly, man. <clears throat> well, Joe, I'll tell you this, dude. I'm fucking, I mean, we're coming to the top of time. I'll tell you, that Justin has a saying, you know it's good when it fucking flies by. And this was, that flew a, by, man. This that was flew a by. fucking good one, dude. This <laughs> was you. such a, dude, I'll tell you, man. We're Super using, interesting. Oh, this was awesome. Yeah, this this is one so, of the, out of all the professions, you know, we can check off the list. Yeah. But I didn't think we were going to check off plastic surgeon. This is, yeah. a, this is awesome. No, it was my yeah. pleasure, man. It was awesome. Dude, cool. no, I'll Very tell you, time. I'll tell you this, dude. I loved having you on. And usually me and me, Justin and Tom are on the same page with this. But if you'd be willing, we'd love to have you back on the show. If Anytime, you, man. I would do it again. Absolutely. Fuck that yeah, flew dude. by. Dude, Shit, we, didn't a, we didn't even get a chance to talk about <laughs> bourbon, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were <laughs> talking. Yeah. I was wondering what you were drinking. I got some uh, uh, so Blanton's listen, right? upstairs. Oh, uh, Blanton's is good. I love yeah. Blanton's. So this one, this is a Jefferson's Reserve. Reserve. Yeah. Now, this is, this is the Pritchard's blend. They finish it in a Chardonnay cast. No, I'm oh. sorry. No, no, Cabernet cast. Still. So it's that's finished cool. in a that's one so of it's my got favorites. a nice, like a nice hint in there of like, you know, kind of, of like a cab. In, yeah. Dude, I like that's yeah. a great idea. They finish this distilling process in a Cabernet barrel. Or Cabernet, Cabernet cast. Barrel. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. They fit Damn. Cabernet barrel. Yeah, totally. That's fucking pretty good. Huh? That's nice. That's a nice one. Nice, dude. Nice. And it was good, good stuff. Smooth. It's very smooth. Tom, very, you were a bourbon smooth. guy for a while, right? Still, yeah. I look. At, I got Jefferson Reserve upstairs too. No shit. Yeah, I went to tequila one. for a little bit, and then uh, you're you know. out of your fucking mind. Fuck <laughs> like fucking. The good dude. ones are good. Me and tequila. Say, tequila great. So I, I can't. I I bartended. I couldn't drink tequila. Same. Just pour. Just pouring it would make me nauseous. Ugh, so, right. so now, why, when I was down in plastic surgery, I got to give a shout out to my man down in Miami, Enrique Enrique Hanneberg. Ooh. Enrique Hanneberg. <laughs> so he was a resident the year behind me, but he grew up in Miami. Enrique was the mayor of Miami. Yeah. He gets you into any club. So I'm out. I'm out in LA now. He calls Enrique me up. Enrique Hanneberg. That sounds like half. Yeah, the, it's like you know, half yeah. Half it's like it's kind of like a Lenny Kravitz situation. He's, and he's and he's Colombian, right? He's Colombian. <laughs> so Enrique. Wow. Oh, no, shit. I'm sorry. I'm nope. sorry, Enrique. He's been his will. He's been his will. Yeah. Some Jorge Schwartz. Ran Miami. Yeah. Some doctor so, married his his. his yeah. His he, he calls me up. He's like, Joe, I'm coming out to LA for a fracture fractures course. Let's hang out. Me and Lou were coming out. They were the classmates behind me, Lou Runworth. Great guys. Yeah. yeah. So they come out. Somehow Enrique knows the owner of this club in LA called Guys and Dolls. Yeah. So Sunset Boulevard. 
So we go hang out there. And we're, we're in the, the owner's booth. Yeah. He comes up to me, Joe, drink this tequila. I'm like, bro, I don't drink tequila. It makes me nauseous. Blah, blah, blah. We go back and forth. He's like, Joe, this bottle's $900. Drink the damn tequila. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll drink the tequila. Yo, this tequila was smooth, man. Yeah. It was good shit. I don't know what yeah. it was. $900 a bottle. Dude. But it's crazy. Me and my wife were leaving that club that night. And I remember, so we met the owner. And he's pulling out behind us, actually. And he's in a Porsche Panamera. I'm like, shit, Adam, look at that dude's car. I'm like, shit, man. I'd love to have one of those day, one day. Porsche, that was beautiful. Needless to say, the Porsche Panamera was my first, pa- that was my first Porsche. Oh, I, your first. Oh. <laughs> I just get, I just got yeah, my first Porsche is still TBD. Yeah. <laughs> nah, don't ever buy one because no? nah, you know why? There's such amazing cars you'll never go back. Yeah, really. That I swear to God, I've owned all the major brands. I had a Panamera GTS, and that that was the absolute best car I've ever owned. Mechanically, no shit. that fucker, that thing never broke down. No shit. Amazing car. And naturally aspirated V8 engines. You dope. started that fucker up, man. You heard it two blocks away. Amazing, I want to, dude. I, I do want to go nine eighteen. I would, I would love to go electric with my next car if I. Yeah, nine eighteen is awesome. The nine eighteen Spider. Those are fucking cool. Uh, it's an amazing car. Well, look at you, fucking Justin, the fucking car guy. All of a sudden, <laughs> my I son, want a nine nineteen. What do you think? About that? <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, I got, I have a nine eleven now. That's awesome too. It's Damn. Good uh, Damn. the standard, or you got the the GT three? Never forget. <laughs> so, uh, GT three. Yeah, how how long ago did you get it? Because my my buddy's been trying to get one. He can't get an L. Like you can get an allocation for it, but they have no to, term date of like so when it'll actually get. Yeah, delivered. it'll take a um. Or they want twenty thousand more just to get the allocation yeah. spot. And he's like, I'm not. I, I, I bought mine. Mine is a twenty twenty nine eleven. It's a it's a four S. It's a it's a convertible yeah. ca- a cab four S. Um, yeah. and I had what's called the nine nine two version. So I had the first year of the nine nine two. It's a twenty twenty. It's all black with the spider wheels on it. Oh, it's a, it's a bro, sick car. Man, if you weren't I, married, golly, they'd be just. I got. Look, I got to give. In. I got to give a shout out to Sloan Porsche. Hey, out here in Warrington. The GM is Mark Brenner. Go check him out. Awesome guy. Nice. Car enthusiast. Dude knows his Porsches. Tell him I sent you. Sloan Porsche. We'll have a link in the description. Yeah, Sloan Porsche. Mark That's going to be our next sponsor. Dude, I mean, I uh, shout out to Sloan Honda because that's where I go. If you want a car on the show. Listen, if you want a car guy on your show, Mark's a buddy of mine. I'll, I'll talk dude, to you. Dude, uh, hey, fast. We got dude, a mechanic on him. the show, yeah? Love yeah, because I would have first... a mechanic on, and they could fucking chalk, <laughs> chalk it up. Yo, the funny shit is, the first Porsche I bought, I went to buy the GTS, yeah. and I looked at one on his lot, Yeah. and I was operating up here. I wasn't living up here in Bucks County, and so I, uh, I'm conducting. I end up buying it from Porsche Pittsburgh while I'm sitting a Porsche on his lot, oh, and shit. I walk in. I'm Yo, but we became buddies. He's yeah. like, you never buy it, but I, I bought my I bought my 911 from him. Yeah, and uh, we're buddies now. He he fucking loves cars. Yeah. Great dude. Yeah, awesome personality. I would love for him to be on your show, dude. Dude, shut we'll up. You can you can. Debate. We'll have you and hit. You can co-host it with me. We'll have him on. We'll do it up. I'll bring on my mechanic to you know so they can talk shop and fucking do it Who, up. Who's baby. your mechanic? You say you had a mechanic guy out here. So dude. our uh, one of the we do two shows. The guy so that wants the tits. Yeah, as everybody knows, uh, we have the main show, which is this show, the Tuesday show, the main interview show. And then on Fridays, we air the weekend pop in, which is available now on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Work and Perspectives Podcast. But either way, on the weekend pop in, it's a weekly topical show where we discuss the episodes that we release and like kind of current things going on. I'm on that show, Justin's on this show. Well, as Burn Podcasty, uh, Liam Reese, and Sean Day, and then Steve Cabot and Steve Cabot owns Gwendale Automotive in uh in uh West Point. Yeah. Yeah. Rip, rip yeah. yeah, yeah. West, uh, yeah. West Point, New York? No, no. Uh, West Point, Point, West Point uh in Lansdale, like right next to North, Lansdale. North oh, Wales. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 608 Garfield Avenue. It's also our HR department. That's <laughs> awesome. So nice. All right. So we're coming to the top of time. Dude, uh, Joe, man, fucking thank you so much, dude. This was such a good My fucking pleasure. time. And a great Likewise. show. Really, really liked it. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we're, before we get out of here, Joe, is there anything you'd want to say to your adoring fan base before we take off? Yeah, listen. So 
a couple things. One is, and I'm going to make it quick. I know you got to get off. No, dude. Uh, hey, I'm. If you're good, I'm good. Take your time, brother. No, yeah, I'm in no rush. Me either. I'm just out here sipping bourbon. Keep, hey. fuck, keep, keep that fucking camera rolling. <laughs> no, keep me by the pool. <laughs> no, in all honesty, listen, man. Number one is believe in yourself. Okay, Damn, believe in yourself. Damn, and, and the second thing is, don't be afraid to fail. Yeah. Right. Don't be afraid to fail. Yeah. So many people. When I, when I started on this journey and I said I was going to be a plastic surgeon and a doc, so many people laughed at me uh, and expected me to fail. Yeah. They want you to. And, and they want to feel better the about themselves yeah. because they don't have the courage to fucking do it. And that's, that's what, it what it is. So don't, don't be afraid to fail. Forget about what you think you can't do. Like I said, I was the guy that was a retard in math and then turned into a math genius. Yeah. Hard work, man. You work yeah. hard and nothing is impossible. Damn right. All right. So that, that's what I'm that's what I want to say to the younger folks out there. So believe in yourself and don't stop trying. And yeah. if you fail the first time, keep going. Okay. Yeah. And don't be a and, pussy. And, and then to the people <laughs> that want plastic surgery, yo, listen, I'm a home run hitter. Hell yeah. And and and, and and when you're ready to stop having surgery and get ready for a vision, come see me. We'll have a link in the description to, to your place. To what's your? Do you have a website? It's very easy. JoeTMD.com. Love it. MD.com. JoeTMD.com. There'll be a link Check in the out. description of this episode. Check him out because I know plenty of the listeners need a little touch. When, you, when, you, when you're ready for excellence, love it. Come see. Come Step see up your to boy. the plate. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Love it, dude. So yeah, so like I <clears throat> like I said. We'll have a link in the description of this episode for JoeTMD.com. Get your shit right. Get your vision straight. Nice. Uh, Jalen, Justin, anything you want to say to the Dub Nation before we get out of here? Yeah, I'm going to stop by the office, maybe get a little consultation, see if I can't get like a like a, like a a thigh titty jug to just play with, you know? <laughs> some, some yeah, around, right around the kneecap. Just a sure, you know, tweak sure. at, tug at. Yeah, get yourself a calf titty. Maybe you know? a uniboot, just a center tit. I don't know. It's something you to know. jiggle around. You know what I'm saying? Can you just right. add nipples? Listen, if the check if the check clears, we can Yeah, he'll fucking, he'll fucking make you look like Eight. fucking Madonna, baby. Come on. Get some belly nipples. Yeah. Nice. All right. Very cool. Thanks for that. Uh Captain Jerkbeard. Anything you want to say to the Captain Jerkbeard faithful before we get out of here? Um just want to say it was an awesome show. Joe, it was great uh, getting to hear about what you do. And I love the message about uh, everyone, you know, believing in themselves, working hard, and not yeah. uh, paying attention to the haters. Um, also, Thank don't you. forget to follow me on uh, at the Tom Lavelle Show. Yeah, we'll have the, a link in the description for the Tom Lavelle Show. Also. Nice. All right. Hey, well, is, is, he, is he over at Henzo Gracie's yet or what? No, not no, yet. He's, he's, he's a purple too young. Bug. He's too young. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, dude, I'll tell you, man, I'm going to get my daughter there as soon as she's old enough. She's only two now, but she's she's three years, dude, as soon as she's old enough, man, I'm telling like I've talked to Rich and stuff like, you know, people have told like for a young girl, right, to know those skills, hopefully she'll never have to use them. But if she like he's told me if people come up to him, say like, yo, there was a situation Mm -hmm. at a college and because she had this foundation, she was able to get out of it kind of thing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, like, dude, she got to be able to defend herself some way. And I think jujitsu is a great equalizer when it comes to, you know, men and women. So, but either way, speaking of great equalizers, this has been another episode of the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle, accompanied by Jalen Dub, Justin Richardson, Captain Jerkbeer, Tom Lavelle. And our guest today is Joe TMD, Joe Tamburino. You can find all our stuff and all our content and all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. You can us on Instagram at Working Perspectives Podcast and you can join us on the Twitter and the Tiki Talk at Working P Pod. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workperspectives at gmail.com and please like and subscribe so we can keep this party going. This has been another episode of the Working Perspectives Podcast. Thanks for listening. Stick around for the ad read. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Do you have a message or a story inside of you that you've been waiting to tell? Have you always dreamed of writing a book but are intimidated by the complexities of the book publishing world? Perhaps you want to use a book to launch your public speaking or consulting career. If so, 
please reach out to Scott and Bell Publishing, located right here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Scott and Bell Publishing handle all genres and authors with all experience levels. Scott and Bell Publishing gives authors 100% creative freedom and a higher royalty split. They can be found at www.skotbell.com. That's www.s is in Sam, K is in Kite, O is in October, P is in Tom, B is in Boy, E is in Edward, L is in Larry, L is in Larry.com. That's Scott and Bell Publishing, where the authors go.